Okay. So hopefully this sounds good. This is my first time going live with the with the microphone and with the camera. So we'll see how this goes. Just it's kind of a test stream. I've already done testing with with the recordings, but uh, we'll see how it goes. This is an easy, a nice and easy game to do a to do a stream with. Might be a little boring, so. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I don't know if I have it set where I want it to be yet, but we'll see how it goes. Probably end up changing it like 30 more times. We'll see. Um, so yeah, this is Eastside Hockey Manager. I've already, I've already kind of gone through the the off season all the way. We're at, as you can see up here in the top right, we're on October 2nd, and it starts at 2020 because the latest update. Uh, only gives you the option to start in 2020 because the 2020 season isn't over yet. Um, so I just started in 2020. Same thing you do in NHL 21 uh, on PS4 or Xbox. Um, so I'm the Canucks, obviously. You can do a lot of stuff. Um, if anybody's played before, I don't know if you have. I, this is kind of my first go at it. Uh, in the la I've been playing for about a week now just to kind of figure out how everything works before I streamed it um, But it's pretty it's pretty fun and also hey Alex. How does the music sound? Is it too loud too quiet? Can you hear my voice over the music and it's not like annoying sounding? Or should I just turn the music off? Sounds good, okay, okay, we'll leave it at that unless somebody complains um so yeah, so I've, I've already made some moves. We're at the start of of this for, of the 2020 season, but I made a bunch of moves. Um, let's let's see if we can actually go through all the moves. I'm still trying to get used to. There's so many different menus you can go through on here. Uh, let's see, transactions might show. Okay, so here's all of all of the trades I made. So Jake for Tannen. Uh, to Buffalo for a third round pick. Uh, I traded Braden Holtby to St. Louis for Ivan Barbashaw. So Braden Holtby's trade value it was high, but nobody wanted him. So I did this thing where you can, where you can basically put feelers out and see if every team in the league would be interested, and then you. It's basically the the auto trade, the same as the auto trade thing in uh, NHL Twenty One. Um, and so yeah, but Barbashev is a nice, uh, basically third, fourth line center, and he's only 24, so he do, does have some, some, uh, potential to grow into. It says here he's good for, so my scout, Thomas Gradine, my, my head scout, actually, Thomas Gradine, he's good, it says he's good for around 30 points in an 82 game season, two way forward, all around center three-star player and he'll his future is most likely gonna continue to be a three-star player which is fine um i if he becomes a top six forward that would be cool but we, we need to fill out the bottom six with with young-ish players and not jay beagle type players uh and his and his contract expires at the end of the year at 1.4 mil uh so if he doesn't have a great year we can we can re-sign him to a much lesser deal, or we can just let him go. Uh, probably will want to keep him because I did trade Holtby for him, but I mostly traded Holtby to get his contract out of there. <laughs> oh, you subscribed? Oh, sorry, buddy. I don't have the I don't have the uh, alerts set up yet. That's one thing I haven't set up. But thank you for the subscription. That's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Even though I know it's free because you did it with Prime, but whatever. You still did it. You used it on me, so that's cool. Um, how do you turn chat notifications on? Let me know, and I'll do it. Is it in the... In the chat settings, I don't see it. <laughs> 
on, I don't think you can on sub. <laughs> Your money is mine. <laughs> um, okay, so... You're suing Twitch. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, there's as you can see, there's a lot, and that this is only coming from my my head scout. He's the only one that's really telling me anything about him. But like you can see his report card. This is his abilities uh, currently. So if you're kind of looking for players and what they can do, one of the things that really brought me to him was his defense being a B minus. We have we have other younger centers who or centers slash wingers that who are either not good enough to be in the league or are in the league, but they're not good defensively. So we kind of needed a defensive type player on the younger side. So maybe he could grow into that type of role. Um, and his hockey sense is decent. His puck handling is decent. His scoring isn't super decent, which is what makes him probably a, a third line player, fourth line player. And obviously, like, his skating doesn't say it's super great, but a C-plus is, like, so, for example, Thomas Gradine is the head scout. So there's other scouts who said he was he's a little better when I was scouting him and trying to figure out who to trade for. Um, so he, he's a little more on the neutral side, and he doesn't want to overhype players. So I have him set up for the, I have him scouting my draft, my head scout which I think makes the most sense. And I have all my other younger guys, or not younger guys, but my, all, the, all my other scouts. I do have a 25-year-old scout, but all my other scouts are scouting uh, like college, junior leagues, uh, North America as a whole, and then some other countries like Germany, Sweden, and stuff like that. And then, and then I have, I think I have two scouts doing North America. One is doing like, one age group and then another is doing another age group and then i have one scout that's purely just scouting the nhl looking for basically setting i'm basically setting that up so that i can look at any nhl players profile and have the scouting report there because you can go on certain players and there's no scouting report because they're my scouts don't know anything or haven't checked them recently so it's basically the same as the fog of war in uh ea nhl 21 but this this game's been around since freaking like 2003 or something this is i believe the last new game new like downloadable game was 07 but they've been updating this one every couple of years so i think the latest update update on like uh overlay and stuff was from 2016 but they there's obviously updates on the rosters and stuff that you can do which is roster sharing like ea come on roster sharing this this game's only 20 bucks and it's like yeah anyways i'm not gonna go too too deep into that everyone has their opinion on the ea's thing but it's probably the same as everyone as mine and everyone else's <laughs> Um, so like there's, there's other things you can look in like their profile. So here's like their main current statistics, what they're good at. You want your players in the NHL to have mostly green. And I think in the important ones, like if you have a center, you want his face offs to be at least 10, 10 is going to be the, this color. It's not going to be green, but if they're at least 10 and they're not like already fully developed and they're not a fully developed nhl player then they can grow a little bit in that but like if they're if it says that they're supposed to be like a scoring winger or something and their stick handling sucks and their wrist shot sucks and it's under 10 then like they better they better have good potential otherwise it's good that's gonna suck it is very complicated i know alex but just think of it just think of this game as as a car and you gotta you gotta take it apart and put it back together and you gotta figure out all the stuff in between because i know that that's kind of your language so <laughs> it's very in-depth like i like i told you earlier i'm st i started 
so the date is October 2nd. I started this game like uh, over a week ago and the date was like September or something. And I've just been going crazy with the scouting and the, all the stuff like that. It's, it's crazy. But it's it's fine. Like it's not some. It's you don't have to. Like you you can't sim seasons in one night. It's not like uh, EA where you can go through a, a almost a whole a whole um, career or whatever in like one or two days. This is like you actually put some time and effort into it, which makes it fun for me because I'm. I'm getting kind of bored of the EA NHL franchise mode because it's so easy to just like take advantage of and make it go how you want it to go instead of making mistakes and then learning from the mistakes. Um, another thing that they put in this game that's really interesting is uh, they added just recently the the Seattle um, the Seattle team, but they're not gonna come in until after this season because it's 2020. So. Technically, I could have I could have come into this game as a free agent GM, and then simmed all the way until the Seattle team can make a hire, and then I would like apply for that job or something. But it was it was gonna take too long, so I just decided to do the Canucks for now, and then uh, we'll see what the what happens with the expansion draft. One thing the game doesn't hasn't really prepared me for yet is like the expansion draft and like stockpiling players so I'm hoping there is some info on that at some point in the season um but we'll see how it goes we'll see if my we'll see if my team gets like screwed over maybe they'll have like a practice expansion draft so I can like see what might happen and if I should trade players or or whatever um, anyway, so yeah, we got Ivan Barbashev for Holtby. We moved Guillaume Breezeball because what I what I found out was I you can ask uh, in the actions if it's your player, you can ask your coaches in the NHL and the AHL what they think of the player, and they'll tell you they'll be like this this player isn't worth anything or he's not gonna his future isn't in the NHL or his future isn't in our, on our team. Or he will be, he's going to be a star player or he'll be a core player going forward or, and stuff like that. So they'll tell you a little bit about what he can do right now and if he should be sent down or if we should trade him or if we should keep him. And then he'll tell you, they'll tell you um, if the player can, could develop into something based on what they think. Um, and so like I've got Travis Green uh right here travis green Nolan Gom baumgartner but I'll, I'll show you all that after uh let's go back to uh where did it, what happened here oh i've lost where i uh transactions okay so yeah we traded breezeblah myers which the in the game he's actually a decent player which i mean i don't disagree with fully i don't think his stick handling is it would be a 13 his slap shot power would be good but it this just does slap shot in general um which i don't think should be that high positioning's probably a little lower because you've seen him in game he uh he likes to he <laughs> he doesn't take advantage of his long his long hockey stick which is frustrating because he's so tall. He's got a, he's got long arms, so he has a long hockey stick and he ends up just like going down on one knee or on his stomach and reaching and then the player deeks around him and or he slides past his own net and then it's like a breakaway. Passing's okay. Like hitting's definitely good because of just how tall he is and how strong he is. Um, Face-offs, who cares? He's a defenseman. Deking, he's a defenseman, not a big deal. Uh, checking is decent, which, I mean, physically checking, yeah, stick checking, I don't know. Um, and then, like, obviously his physical, his physical is probably his best attributes in real life, and uh, so I agree with this side. This part, I'm not too sure, like, influence is probably good, teamwork's probably good, work rate is probably good, 
It's just some of the other stuff, like the defensive side of the game, that I don't agree with. Um, so he's considered a star, or not a. Uh, he's considered a five star player, a point man and a physical point man. Which, but it does say his his points expected is like 25, 30 points. So I mean, look at 120 penalty minutes. So I mean that's accurate. He's definitely takes penalties. <laughs> So we moved him, Breezebois, for Boston's first round pick and Boston's second round pick. Which, I mean, if if the Canucks did that in real life, I'd be like, holy hell, you guys are masters. What happened to Jim Benning? Like, <laughs> uh, I traded Ole Olevi because the coaching staff didn't see a future for him. Uh, and our second round pick for Gabriel Carlson. Who's a six foot five, twenty three year old? Basically, a similar, a similar player to Yulevi, a year older and uh, like three inches taller. But the coaches liked him, or the scouts liked him. Um, so, oh, we don't have a scouting report at the moment. But when I was scouting him before the trade, this the scouts did like him. His wrist shot isn't great, but like, look at his physical and um he's not super aggressive which is i mean i i prefer not to have aggressive players i prefer to have players that are good at checking so look at his checking it's 17 so he's gonna remove you from the puck without taking a penalty essentially like a chris tanov type maybe not as good as chris tanov but definitely a uh a good player the six foot five part wasn't really what i was paying attention to as much as like the statistics here um so i, I definitely in my for me i like him more than yulevi and he's a little more developed he's a year older so he's already an nhl mainstay yulevi was kind of he wasn't even he wasn't really even uh what am i trying to say he wasn't really performing in uh in the training camp either the coaches weren't happy with him um this next trade i did not want to trade cole Lind, but the coaches weren't happy with aren't no not not that they aren't happy with him but they're they don't have confidence in his future in the nhl and then lucas lucas Yasek for some reason was unhappy it said next to his name um so i just added him in and then traded that to florida for for some draft picks second round fourth round fifth round i probably could have they probably florida probably didn't want to add the fifth but i added the fifth just to get that extra piece because i didn't want to trade cole and um so i mean that's all that's okay and i think i ended up using or i will end up using this florida second pick second rounder for a future trade anyways that, that's part of the reason because Yasek wanted out and Colin the coaching staff didn't like him so I tried to get something that I could use for a future trade because my plan going forward is to upgrade that right side Jake Furtanen wasn't gonna cut it and uh, we need another top six winger because Pod Colson is still in the KHL and when he does come here he'll be a probably be a bottom six guy to start anyways and this team, like, we, we have Thatcher Demko signed for five years. We've got, or do we? Did they update that part? I'm not sure. Either way, we've got, we've got some guys that are in their prime at the moment. So it would be smart to get, to get more guys that are in their prime currently. And then when, so when kind of have it set up so that when those guys kind of go into their, back end of their prime and start to regress a little you have guys like pod colson and hoglander and other guys coming up um to kind of take or maybe like so for example say hoglander is a top six four but say hoglander was on the third line and we had other guys in the top six on the left side um what if the other guy was like a a 30 plus year old guy and he started regressing well just switch them like for example pearson he's gonna be 30 soon so pearson gets older hoglander comes in and 
is now a top six forward, and so you you don't you don't ha all of a sudden have a need for a player because somebody aged out of their role. And that's I mean, Mister Hockey Man, <laughs> the human Google. How are you doing? I haven't seen you talk to you in a while. <laughs> What's with the pound thing? <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, that is, I I didn't couldn't figure out what the emoji was, but now I see what it is. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Oh, you got a pro controller for your Switch. Nice. What it, what is that? Is that like a specific uh, kind of controller? I actually want to get a Switch too. They seem really fun. It's the best. That, that's what I figured. That's what I figured. What kind of games do you play, Human Google, on Switch? Um, okay, so next trade. So we got those picks. Next trade I did. Matthew Highmore. This is a big one. Matthew Highmore, Nate Schmidt, who's also a highly rated defenseman. Um, but obviously on a really interesting contract, <laughs> I like an H Schmidt too. Uh, so tr this trade was difficult. Uh, this is the trade Alex that took me two or three days to make because they kept rejecting whatever I was offering. So Matthew Highmore, Nate Schmidt, the rights to Nikita Trampkin, and he's actually, so what, when you're doing your trades, there's a, a little, a little, uh, part on the side on the right side that tells you how much the team is interested in him or if you're looking the other way how much the, how much the team doesn't want to trade him so for Trampkin it had three three dots out of five which means there were three out of five was their interest in the player which was pretty pretty high considering he's not available to play this season until his contract ends currently wrestling empire fortnite oh i didn't know they had fortnite on on switch that's cool Ooh, pokemon sword and shield nice noise um so yeah i traded those three guys and winnipeg sixth round pick i had to add that little sweetener in there to Florida for Brandon Montour, 26-year-old defenseman, just as good, if not better, than Nate Schmidt, also a right-handed right-side defenseman. Oh, you were on Fortnite when we were playing? That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's funny. Um, or you were on Switch when we were playing Fortnite. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so yeah, Brandon Montour. He's three years younger, possibly possibly four years younger than Nate Schmidt. He's The only thing is that his contract expires this year, so he's going to want to get paid, which is fine. I'll pay him. He's only 26, but he's just as good as Nate Schmidt, except he's a right-handed defenseman, which fits better with Quinn Hughes. And if you look at Tanev and Hughes last year versus Hughes and whoever he's played with, which is all the other defensemen, this year, it definitely makes a difference to have a two-way defenseman who is playing on his strong side. Schmidt's good on the right side, but he's his strong side is the left side. So, And he was one of the only defensemen that had uh, some value. Montour's a player I, I really wanted to get to because he is younger. But he's in that prime age I was talking about earlier where... He's in his prime, so let's add prime players with our other prime players currently. Uh, Brandon Montour, Noel, Noel As Asari, I believe is how you say his name. He's a solid bottom six forward who plays, who can play center. He's only a seven in faceoffs, but he's a he's like another uh, Tyler Mott, and Tyler Mott's actually a very uh, very useful player in this game. Like the the coaches rate him highly and other teams rate him highly too he's essentially my third line center um 
and I got I tried I wanted to add him into this trade so that I could get Sutter out of here or at the very least just not re-sign him at the end of the season um, and he's on a cheap deal for another year after this year too so it's perfect and I just remember so that's that was my big trade that I can remember now obviously the Tyler Myers one was big but we got draft picks which we're probably going to end up using later to get that top six right winger draft picks are just easier to to handle for organization reasons and I I was trying to make a Tyler Myers trade for a right winger and it just wasn't working so I decided to make the move to get some draft picks um yeah, it's not showing me... I feel like I made other trades as well. Or maybe... No, I did put some... I did put some players on waivers and stuff. So, Jace Howerlick was claimed off waivers. Sven Bar Berchi was claimed off waivers. I was... Honestly, I was planning on having Sven Berchi in the... I was planning on having Sven Berchi in the top six because he is a skilled player, but the co the coaching staff um, said that he's overrated. Like Travis Green, Travis Green went and went and said that he's overrated and that his skill is best suited in the, in the minor leagues, which I disagree with. <laughs> yeah, Alex, I know, right? <laughs> he's an NHL player. At the very least, he's a third-line scoring winger, like a Tanner Peterson or something. Um, but, like, look at this. Poise is definitely not a C. Size and strength. Okay, size shouldn't be, in my opinion, should not be, like, a factor in if a player is able to play in the NHL. Strength should be for sure. But just because you're a skilled player doesn't mean you're not strong. Like, if you look at Braden Point, for example, he's five foot nine. But he plays like a power forward. Uh, Sidney Crosby, five foot eleven. He's like two. He's like five eleven, but he's like two hundred five pounds or something. And he's got tree trunks for legs. So you don't have to be tall to be freaking strong. Like size and strength don't have to go hand in hand, which is annoying. So his strength is probably a C plus or a B. He's not. He's not a weakling. Uh, defense is better than that for sure. It's at least a C, C plus and um shot scoring uh maybe a c plus just because he played a whole year in the ahl skating is definitely a lot better than that like the the game well this isn't this is the roster that it downloaded but it's the roster that everyone's using for their for this so Obviously, it's hard to put a lot of time into every single player. So, I mean, I understand it. It just sucks because I think Sven Berchi is way better. So, anyways, I just put him on waivers. He got picked up. He's got a high... Even for what I think he is, he's still paid a lot. So, I mean, we got some... We got some money out, at least. Um, yeah, so Berchi and Howerluck, which was also another player the coaches didn't like. So, I basically just moved out players... Most, mostly just players that the team didn't think was going to help to have a f uh, successful future. So that's what we did. Um, anyway, so my goal is still... So if we look at uh, roster, we'll go to tactics because it kind of shows the lines. Um, oh, wait, let's... Sorry, let's go back... There are so many, so many things to look at that it's. Whoops, no, not that. Uh, transactions. So you can look at the transactions in like all the leagues too, which is like super difficult. See, there's five pages up here, so you don't scroll. You just go page one, page two, which is a little annoying. Hopefully, they'll have an update in the next year or so, where. It, you can kind of scroll that would be nice um but anyways we go if we go the whole year and we go to staff transfers 
you can see the first thing I did, well, Jim Benning, I took Jim Benning's job. So they just kind of automatically made him a free agent. Uh, I fired Newell Brown or released him. Ted Hampson was a 84 year old scout. And I was like, you know what? It's time to retire. <laughs> it is time to retire. And I believe I replaced him with a 25 year old scout. Nope, nope. Wise broad, I'm on I'm in the if you would use your eyeballs, Alex, I'm in the transaction section. Ron Delorme I I released and John Wisebrod I released. So John Wisebrod I released him. Yeah, I did not keep him. Yes, you did read it very wrong, Alex. <laughs> um see I'll show you. So these are the guys that I let go. Uh, I believe that's Everyone I let go. I wish I could filter this part, but it's not letting me. Tra player transfers, maybe. Well, no. Waiver movements. Yeah, that's just. Uh... Yeah. Anyways, uh, I will show you, Alex. I will go to front office and then I will go to personnel Aquilini I can't fire him because I'm down here Stan Smeal is a managing director so that's where he he's right below Francesco so he's so apparent I guess in real life as well he's he is above Jim Benning let me just get comfortable here <laughs> Doug Jarvis as well I, I remember wasn't Doug Jarvis actually um wasn't he an assistant coach when Gillis was the GM? I believe he was. I remember I remember he was um I remember when he was assistant coach he wore that weird uh that weird helmet that was like a baseball helmet, a batter's helmet. Um it was like good luck or something, I don't know. Uh there's hockey hugs, there's me, general manager. My rep is still just good because I'm new. We've got Ralph Kruger, who's actually very good. His physiotherapy isn't good, but he's not pro he's not providing physiotherapy, so that's good. <laughs> coaching goalies isn't good, but he's not coaching goalies, so I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, but his his coaching of other players is good. But also, if you look at his mental. His working with youngsters is 13. His motivating is 13. His management of people is good. His level of discipline isn't super great, which is why assistant GM, you must listen to me. Uh, determination is good. Adaptability is good. So he's basically my right-hand man. He's the one who kind of gives me, if we go to the, if we go to the trade, go down here, he's, He's going to be telling me what he thinks about the trade. And most most of the time I'll listen to him. So if I if I add a player that I like and he says I don't like this player in this trade, then I'll look I'll look further into it and see why possibly he doesn't like him. Um and then if I still like him after that, I'll still go through with the trade, but at least he gives me a second opinion to kind of figure out if, if I'm making the wrong decision. He did that before with a player, and I was like, oh, you know what? I should not keep that, get that player. So it kind of, a way to, because I, I was working for a bit. I fired Wisebrod, and I couldn't figure out how to hire. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I was I was trying to make do trades and stuff, and I didn't have anybody to help me like that. So it's definitely useful to have that. And then if looking in the trade page, you can see Anaheim's wants and needs here so if you're when you're making the trade you can have that in mind as well um so let's go back to uh personnel travis green i extended him for 3.1 mil for i think the full five years or whatever because he's a good coach nolan baumgartner we kept he's still young at 44 i don't know if he'll end up being a head coach but he's definitely a decent coach guy boucher who was a uh, was the first head coach that took Tampa to the uh, to the 
I think the finals with Steven Stamkos. And then he's a guy, he's a guy with the scar on his face. He looks like a he looks like a James Bond villain, but he's def, he's got really good stats. I think he's been working in Europe or something at the moment, but he's a good uh, assistant. He's only 49, so he's still pretty young. Could eventually become the head coach if Travis Green retires or goes somewhere else. Uh, we kept Ian Clark. We're paying him we're paying him a premium for goalie coaches, I guess, is, is what it is. Um, and you can see he's really good with goalies, but he's also really good on the mental side. So he's got, there's a possibility for him in management. I actually offered him a job in management and he said no. Okay. Well, you're not working today? It's Tuesday. Go to work. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you later. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I think I offered Ian Clark a job in management because I was, in, before I hired Ralph Kruger, I was going to offer him the job. And he said he didn't want to do it. So we'll see when his when his contract ends in 24 25 we'll see if he wants to do that and we've got jason king who is an assistant coach but i believe he's the assistant coach for utica maybe not maybe he's just a regular assistant coach i don't know but I decided to keep him either way. I, I think in real life he is an is a assistant coach in Utica. Or was in Utica. Now it's Abbotsford. But. Um, it was. Um, now it's moved to Abbotsford obviously. So. Uh, Thomas. So so I fired the uh, other head head scout and made Thomas Gradine head scout. He's been a scout for the Canucks. He's 64. He's been a scout forever for the Canucks. Um, so I made him the top head scout and his, his, his abilities are very good. So all this red you're seeing doesn't matter at all because he's a scout and he's 64. So I'm assuming his, his want to be a, a coach or anything like that doesn't exist. It's because his tactical knowledge is a one. His physio is a one coaching is in the red but his judgment of players is elite his adaptability is up there determination is up there level of discipline i don't even know how that really affects uh someone in management or someone in a, in scouting and management in this game other than like in real life it would be like oh he goes to the bar too much or something i don't i don't like what like is he hitting is he hitting players when he meets them? Like, what the heck's going on with that? I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, his management of of players, I assume. His motivating motivation, I guess. When you're a head scout, you have, you talk to your other scouts, and working with youngsters is super important if you're scouting uh, players for the draft, which is one of the reasons I I put him on the draft exclusively. So. That'll be good. And then we go. We got Jonathan Bates was a free agent. I, I hired. He's only 35. Um, but he already has good numbers for judging of players and management other than level of discipline. Which is a little alarming. But I but it's even it's more alarming because I don't know what it affects in this game. If it affects anything. Uh, but he is only 35 so that number should go up over time uh, we go to uh, uh, most of these guys are like chibisov has been a scout for the Canucks for a while now so I just kept him uh, most of these guys are I kept I hired Randy Cunnyworth um, Phil Golding I believe I hired too and then we have uh, where's the 25 year old? There we go. William White. He's younger than me. But look at this guy. He's got so much potential. He's already, his judging of, excuse me, his judging of player ability is super high. Oh, I'm kind of young. Oh. His judgment of player is super high for being 25. 
His adaptability is a full 20. But that's something that comes with being young, I think, because he he wants to uh, succeed. And so I kind of use him as a, as a rover. I don't have him assigned permanently to anything. So I kind of just um, throw him around to... So I you you get a you can you can uh, make a short list of players you want to be looked at of any age in the NHL or in the in, like high schools and stuff. So whenever I get my scouting reports every few days from all my other scouts, I I look at the players that I might be interested in and you can add them to a list up in this area and then um, yeah, you can just this guy, I set set him to scout that list, so he'll go to where all those players are and uh, come back, and I'll have a really really good scouting report on that player, whether it's leading up to the draft or if I want to make a trade or a, one big thing I'm really looking into is um, signing college free agents. So the I believe like players that are either undrafted, so they could be 22 or older. And then players that their contract, their rights are ending with the player that did draft them. Um, so they would be like 23, 24, 25, depending on when they were born, I guess. Or like I, some players will sign their ELCs. Oh, no, you can't. Sorry, I got that wrong. You can't sign your ELC when you're in college. If you sign it, then you have to leave college. So... Either way, the, the the college free agents are really interesting. I've I've already I've already invited some to to tryouts and stuff, and I believe I did sign some. We go to uh, go to Rob, but that's all. That's my personnel, and I've got in the bottom the physio physio guys. I just kept all these guys. They're the only stat that really matters for these guys is physiotherapy. <laughs> all the other ones only matter if if they have potential to kind of move up as a scout or somewhere else in management. Um, so we go to roster, we'll go to uh, all contracted players. We go, see, did the Georgiev trade? Oh no, okay, so Alexander Georgiev I got on waivers. I picked him up on waivers, which is surprising because he's a, he's a good goalie, in my opinion. At, at least a high-end backup goalie. So, um, anyways, so we go. Josh McArdle was a was one of those college free agents that he's 26, so he was literally like done college and wanted to keep playing hockey. So, I signed him for a tryout. He didn't do super well, but they said he was good enough to play in the AHL, so that's where he is. Uh, Brendan Scanlon, he's only 21. Um. trying to see nobody i believe he went undrafted yeah it doesn't say he was drafted oh, wait no here we go yeah he was drafted in junior in the ohl but I, he was a uh he was a college player anyways so Yeah, we have his rights. We signed him to play in the AHL. Um, Ryan Collins, 24-year-old. And if, if these players don't end up turning out, it's not a big deal. So, why is this guy unhappy? Oh, he wants to be called up. I see. How old is he? 22? I mean, his... His entire technical side isn't super great. He's very close, but he's not there quite yet. He'll he'll probably be the he's probably next in line to be called up because of this. This side is very good. Um, the stuff that matters is still just barely like his poke checking is one away from being in the green. Positioning is stick handling is off the puck is. Hitting is a 10, which is okay because he's a skilled uh, he's a skilled defenseman. It says he's a physical defenseman, but he's skilled. Um, report card. Yeah, see, like, 
he's got the he's got a good report card. His defense is only a C, and his shot and scoring isn't great. But it's his puck handling that's good that gets him those assists, the setup plays, uh, and that's the type of player you want on defense. You don't necessarily need the big shot. The big shot, I think, is kind of is kind of going out of style. Like there's there's a there's defensemen with the big shot, but they don't use it that much. Shea Weber is like really one of the last ones to really use the big shot. Chara used to have the huge shot, but I don't even think he really uses it anymore. Who knows if he even retires now because he's like, what, 42, 43 now at this point. Um, we've got... Well, I don't know if we signed anyone else. We definitely... Oh, Johan Larson, we got him on waivers. No, yeah, those were, those were all our tryout guys that he ended up signing. So I'm not sure why those... Oh, here we go. Players in. Oh, okay. Ryan Collins, free agent. Aiden McDonough was a draft pick that's now able to play in the NHL or AHL. Uh, Antoine Bibo. I thought he might be a decent backup because I want DiPietro to play in the AHL for one season. But uh, the coaches don't think he's really a... Uh, I'm not sure why the scouting report's not showing me. But like if you look at his his stars are down. Um, it says his career role is third string goalie, so he's essentially next up guy, but I'd probably end up calling up DiPietro anyways. So he's an AHL guy, that's fine, we need AHL guys. Adam Larkin, defenseman, uh, he's 25, so he was another college guy. Uh, Georgiev we've claimed off waivers. I guess the Rangers have money issues or something. Johan Larson off waivers and Thomas Hickey off waivers, which he's he's basically a four or five defenseman. Uh, look at like all his green, um, but he's gonna be a depth guy for us probably, depending on what happens with uh, Jack Rathbone. But according to the coaches, he impressed and he he improved throughout the the training camp. So Jack Rath, it might be between Jack Rathbone and Thomas Hickey, depending on how much offense we want, because Hickey's more of a two-way guy and Rathbone's an offensive uh, Hughes light type of player. So Johan Larson I picked up because uh, he's a, a center left wing, another guy, uh, because Beagle's going to be in the AHL. Sutter's either going to be in the AHL or traded or waived or waivers or whatever. Um, so I just wanted to get some centers to kind of replace those guys because they were they are good at faceoffs. They're just not good at anything else. <laughs> so I just wanted to get some cheaper guys. He's at a 1.4. Um, and then we also will have more cap space to make a trade to get that top six right winger. Um, so yeah, you can see players acquired 13, players shipped out 12. And down here... So you can actually adjust what you have here. You can look at whatever you, a lot of different things, but I have it set up like this so I can see the schedule. So if I press continue, I'm not going over a game and I haven't looked at the lineup or anything like that. So we do have a game today. Um, the league standings over here and our cap situation. So, uh, Just trying to understand what the balance part means. I think that's how much money ownership has given me to play with. And then the total salaries is right here. Average club, club salary is 64 mil and the salary cap is 91. I believe 64 is... Or is this our, can I look at a full screen of that? Um, go to, what other stats are there to look at for general managers? Um, hmm. 
go to overview. We go to information. No. What am I trying to look at here? Trade center, maybe? Salary cap chart. There we go. Okay. So this, in my opinion, is a really good one to look at because you can look at which teams are right up against the cap. Obviously, there's teams like Tampa Bay. You don't even need to look at it. You know they're up against the cap. Uh, the Canuck Okay, yeah. So we're at 63. So we're... We have 27.7 mil in cap space. And that's... A lot of that is going to be going towards uh, Pedersen and Hughes. But we do have some space to get a top six right winger. And so one thing one thing people might be think wondering is the why is the cap why is the cap uh the salary cap so high? It's because the, the game isn't is ignoring COVID. And I prefer that too because it's stupid, but um I mean COVID COVID obviously is effect, going to affect the league for a few years with the salary cap, but I think it's it's going to cause a lot of issues in the game with uh, teams having to like just throw players on waivers. And even even this cap, there was so many players on waivers. There's like one day there was like each team had an average of like six players on waivers, and there was and that's why I picked up so many players on waivers too because I had all this cap space. Because I traded away Myers and uh, and Schmidt, so that's why I picked up all those those players that are our actual NHL talent, so we could fill out our bottom six and our bottom pairing on defense and kind of add some depth. Uh, Sutter and Sutter and Beagle are going to be playing in the AHL, so we got to add depth, cheap depth, to replace them. Uh, cheap and better depth. <laughs> as opposed to worse depth that costs more. And then we can use that money we save on forwards in our top six to help our current core players. Um, what was I doing? Let's go. The nice thing about this game is you can just do this and it'll take you back to where you were instead of having to click around again. Um, okay, so see teams like Vegas like these teams probably have a team like Vegas probably has some space to make some moves if they wanted to because look they have 8 mil in space um, like Philadelphia has 13 mil Ottawa's got 20 like we have more space than Ottawa and I think our team's probably better based on the players we have New Jersey's got more space than us They've got a lot of young players, so they're the youngest team in the league. Detroit's got a lot of space. They put a they put a few big players on the on waiver wire. That's why. Uh, oh, I'm surprised Columbus has that much space. To be honest, Colorado's one of the best teams in the league, and they have all that space. <gasps> Nuts, Chicago. That's that's probably really helpful for Chicago since they have their big contracts. They're screwing them over in uh, in real life. Um, Carolina, another one of the better teams in the league. Buffalo, man, brutal. We go to contracts, man. I, I was actually really trying hard to get Sam Reinhardt, but it's so difficult. They have I, you, the players can set. Uh, oh, you have to go to make a trade. Uh, whoops! What the heck? You salary cap chart. Go to Buffalo. Make a trade. There, okay. So when you're looking to trade for a player, 
here's those uh, those dots I was talking about. It says uh, how adamant the team is in keeping the player. So there's some spots where it says they're untru untouchable or untradeable. So they got Dalin. They've got Linus Olmark for some reason. Like he's he's a decent goalie, but I wouldn't make him untouchable. Uh, Dalin I would because he's so young still. Um, let's see. So yeah, Olmark's on Rasmus Ristolainen is untouchable. Jack Eichel, of course. And Dalin. For some reason, they didn't make Sam Reinhardt untouchable. But it's probably because his contract is coming up. That's probably the reason. But he would be a perfect fit for the Canucks. It's just... That's why I that's why I traded Myers to get that first rounder and the second rounder from Boston because it's gonna take stuff like that to get a player like Reinhardt. Um, they've got Jake Furtanen, hilarious. Uh, let's see. But yeah, so we'll, we're gonna try for a player like Sam Reinhardt. Um, but if it gets too difficult, I might just end up going for her somebody a little like a tier lower maybe than Reinhardt who's maybe a little older and a little less skilled but like maybe a Nugent Hopkins so Nugent Hopkins I'd say is probably in the same tier uh points and skill and all that as Sam Reinhardt he's just like he's 28 29 now so that's where he's that's what puts him down a tier which is fine he's still young and nearing nearing the backside of his prime but he's still there and he'll probably he's the type of player I believe that he would he'll be uh, helpful and he's kind of in that he's in that age range at same age range as uh as JT Miller so uh, I think that's fine because we're keeping JT Miller if I was if I was the Canucks in real life right now with the cap situation I'd probably trade JT Miller for a similar player to him just younger and cheaper to make cap space for other things because obviously right now in the game we have way more cap space than the Canucks actually do. <laughs> so um, so let's try and make that trade right now. I don't think there's a lot of stuff to show you, but we'll, let's get some action going. And let's do it. Uh, so let's add, you can do by position too. So we add Reinhardt. There he is. It says he's four. And then uh, no comment yet from Kruger because I have nothing in my side. If I add like a uh, first, so I have two firsts, or my own first and Boston's. I'll last resort, add my own first in the case that the team doesn't do well and have a high draft pick. You don't want to trade this one right away unless you're going gunning for a player like Sam Reinhardt. So I'll start with the first from Boston because they're going to go in the playoffs. Their pick will be really, really low in the draft. So, or depending on how you think about it, low could mean top five or bottom five. Either, either way, they're, they're gonna, their pick's going to be in the, in the last half of the draft of the first round. So we'll add that. Uh, and then there you go, Ralph Kruger. He thinks this deal would, be, would greatly favor us. So that word favor right there tells me that this is an underpayment and for for Buffalo it's an overpayment. So if I could just look at any players that I would want to add. The funny thing here is I have three players that don't have any value. They don't even have one dot. And I've I've uh, I've tried attempted to make trades with a lot of teams. So I've seen what every team's interest in my players is and Sutter Russell and Beagle are always at blank or zero or whatever. <laughs> so that tells me that minor league, <laughs> that's what that tells me. And even the coaching staff said like, cause I put them all on the block by offering them to the whole league and getting nothing in return. Like the, the league didn't even, no team came with a trade or anything, they didn't want them. So, even the coaching staff was like, I applaud you for putting them on the on the block because this the player is useless to me. <laughs> so um 
so putting Brandon, any of these guys in would be an add-on that if the team was willing to take on. I would have to overpay even more just to get one of these guys out of here, which I don't really want to do if I don't have to, which I don't because I have all this cap space now. So we'll go to interest all the way up. And this one, so it says Edler has a no trade clause. I've made, I've signed a couple players and I haven't seen the ability to add a no trade clause. But it could also be because I was signing younger players. It could be their their e, their their ELC where you can't sign a no trade clause. Um, so I, that's probably the reason. And I haven't seen the ability to in trades where you can add money or or not money, but uh, uh, take on some of a some of a player's uh, salary or a cap hit, sorry, so you can retain some or something like that. I, I have not seen that ability either, so I'm not sure if you can. Um, let's see. Basically, I don't know if I want to trade any roster players. Um, so that, that that's why this gets difficult. It's because the Canucks don't have a ton of value players that we'd be willing to give up because if you trade those value players then your future goes away right so let's go back and see what buffalo is interested in so they're looking to add depth at center a center prospect and a blue line prospect so this this isn't specifically for sam reinhardt they're looking for this is just what they want in general so i don't have to add all these things that they're just interested in each individual thing in general so depth center center prospect and a blue line prospect and they want to maintain their roster and build so like for to extract a player like sam reinhardt out of them would either take a lot of draft picks or a roster player that's that's one of these things or this exact same as reinhardt which there's that's a pointless trade unless a player asks ass out right so I mean, if I signed Reinhardt, I would I would extend him immediately because I don't want him going anywhere. He's he's right in that perfect age with the rest of the core. It's just finding that. It's just finding the right trade that's not gonna hamper the team. So like, if I add the second from Boston and our own second, Kruger's still saying it's gonna favor us. Uh, if we go by position, it's a little easier to look at. Demko, obviously, we're not trading. The funny, the weird thing for me here is that Jake Keeley is our next up goalie when it comes to worth. He's the same age as Demko, but he's like an AHL goalie. Like the scouting report says, his projected his projection is as a backup goalie. Thomas Gradine is saying two stars currently and two stars future. Oh, hey, Bling. How's it going? Oh, thank you so much. Sorry, I don't have... I'm on... I switched over to OBS and I haven't set up the... All the uh, stuff yet. So I didn't notice... What time is it now? Okay, so you just did it a minute ago. Uh, but it's hard for me to notice the stuff. But thank you so much for the for showing love and uh i'm excited to be back i'm excited to have a camera as you can see hello um i'm excited to have uh my really nice mic here now so you can hear my voice even better as nasally as it is <laughs> um and i've got my pcl set up so we're all good thank you i appreciate that thank you um yeah, so I'm excited. Thank you for coming on, and um, thank you for the love and all that. I appreciate it. How, did you stream today? Did you have a good stream? Um, 
30 minutes ago, okay. Yeah, I wanna start I wanna start getting back to being a regular on your stream. I've just been so busy spending a lot of time on the PC to get that set up, but also just like spending a lot of time outside. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. This is this is kind of a test stream for my camera and my mic because I just got I just got my mic yesterday and my camera I just haven't set it up yet but it's set up now so but I appreciate the thought and I'll definitely raid you whenever I can of course I don't even know if, is there even a raid option on here or do you have to open up uh, Twitch on a separate window I guess I'll figure that out later Um, okay, so yeah, the funny thing is Jake Keeley is is worth more, even though he's kind of not really that good. Di Pietro should be worth a lot more, but I would I'd say he's probably four four dots as well. But it's just the other team isn't as interested in him. And I mean, I've got Bibbo, Silovs. And Di Pietro, so Keeley is actually kind of. I'm, I could add him in the trade. He is a three, a three dot player, to them, and they have Sam Reinhardt as a four dot player. Uh, in their willingness. JT. Is very cheap for subs, badges, and emotes. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take a look at that. If you wanna, would you be able to send me that information on on uh, Discord? I'll take a look at that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so so my. Assistant GM thinks this is a fair offer in my experience when my GM my assistant GM says it's a fair offer that usually means It's still not good enough. Oh <laughs> Yeah, I love I love all your emotes. They're awesome Those are awesome. Yeah, I love those have you seen my emote? It's I made it myself in like uh, Let's see where is it? There it is. <laughs> it's just a little hand paw for a bear kind of thing. <laughs> just so that I could have something for for people to have if they decided to subscribe. But yeah, definitely look into into your your friend though cuz your your emotes are super high end. Those are awesome. Definitely want to have really cool stuff like that. Yeah, so if my assistant GM is saying he thinks it's a fair offer, in my experience, I've seen uh, it still not be quite fair. Uh, so if we go to gauge interest, Buffalo saying they're not prepared to discuss such an offer. Um, so, I mean... Sometimes these types of trades do work out still, but usually the trade's gonna work out if they end up saying something along the lines of, this is something we gotta think about. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, if you if you send me the send me his info on um, on Discord, that would be great. And then I'll I'll get on that and I'll have really 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 sick emotes just like you you can even plug them in on plug them in on uh, the chat here if you want if they have a twitch or they yeah, i guess they do have a twitch if they're modding for you i'll follow them on twitch 
Unless I, you just said JT, right? I might already follow them then, actually. Okay, cool. Is it, uh, is it JT, like, 05 or something? Okay, yeah, you'll send on Discord. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, uh, exciting. That's awesome. I haven't really thought of doing the emotes yet because I've been so busy with all the other stuff, but no, that's exciting. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Um, okay, so I got to figure out here. So what, what happens when you offer the trade? You usually end up having to wait about a day or so to get a reply. And so if if this is most likely going to be a rejected offer, I don't want to waste my time with the offer until they say something that's a little more convincing that they might actually accept it. And I mean, I am not going to add my own first rounder into here if I don't have to. So I could go into the 2022 draft, which is going to be an even deeper draft. So I don't know if I want to, but I do have two seconds and one of them's Boston's. So I could throw that in there and then just see what they think. And then we'll go from there. I'll offer that up and then we will continue on to the game that we have on the current day. Okay, enjoy your food. It's it's uh it's first thing in the morning for you, so enjoy your breakfast. I think. I think it's first thing in the morning. <laughs> I think we're nine or ten hours apart, so yeah. It's it's morning ish, I guess, or maybe almost lunch. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay. Ten oh it's ten PM. Oh yeah, sorry, I was look <laughs> I can't do math apparently. <laughs> Have a good dinner, or late dinner, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I'll talk to you later. Get a good sleep, too. Um, okay, so... And on also a nice thing about this game, if I try to sim and continue, it'll do this, because I didn't confirm the lineup um, which I still haven't still want to do so what I'll do here is ask the coach what they prefer and it, it looks like it's already set up the way he wants it take a look at what the lineup is they have one in defense I'm I, honestly I'm not a huge fan of the way this is set up I prefer to have the forward lines nicely set up here defense and then goalie the way you usually see a, a, a roster chart or a lineup chart um, but this I mean it's fine whatever then you get to see like the power plays and stuff too so it's not a big deal maybe if they update it at some point they'll have it nicer but this is this is good as is um, so So this is, I believe this is the start of the regular season. If we go. I'm trying to figure out how we see that. I think it's the start of the regular season. So we pretty much have our NHL roster minus that right winger I'm trying to get. Um, 
I'm surprised Thomas Hickey isn't in, and it's Jack Rathbone that he's got in. But that just, like, our defensive depth looks so much better. Look at that. Oh, you know what? It's, we also, we also have Quinn Hughes, who's injured right now. So this is even, this isn't even our final form. <laughs> uh, I heard that in my, in my, in my mind as I was saying it. <laughs> this isn't even my final form. Um, like Georgia as a backup, like in my opinion, that's that's great to be able to put uh, Di Pietro in the minors to dominate a, at least one more year to become a backup, and then maybe if if Georgia has a has a bad year, or you just you just hold on to three goalies. I mean, I'd be fine with doing that too. Players get injured, so um, it happens. And then maybe find a, uh, somebody to trade him to at the deadline this year or next year, something like that. Not a big deal. It's always good to have extra goalies, especially if you if you watch the uh, watch the NHL at all this year. Having three goalies was super important. Um, okay. <sighs> Another thing is I had to. I had to call up Louis Erickson because I was getting I got a ten thousand dollar fine because I was below the the floor of the salary. So I was like, okay, well who gets paid the most that's in the minors? So I just called up Louis Erickson. <laughs> so he's got he's in the lineup. If we go back to uh let's see. Go to front office and go back to roster. Go to whoop see. Go to forwards. Okay, so we got Jimmy VC and Noel Asari and Justin Bailey are scratches. Oh, we also have a. We also have to send somebody down. So what? What here? This will. I'll show you how the. How the um. Asking the coach's opinion on players works here. So go to Jimmy VC. See how how he is. Scouting report. Two star player. They think uh, Gradine thinks he's good for 30 points. Power four, power winger. Probably a bottom six guy. Uh, you can place him on waivers, but I won't do that just yet. Uh, re request coach report. You can also request a physio report. Uh, if, you, if you're worried somebody's hurt or if they are hurt, you can see how long they'll be out for. Um, so I'll request a coach report and I'll request from Green, Baumgartner, and Boucher. And then uh, we'll go back. We will request a report for Asari if they even have anything to say about him since he's a brand new player on the team. And we'll do the same thing for Justin Bailey and we'll see who ends up getting the most favored note. I'm good. I have a feeling that Bailey will be the odd man out probably. But I like Bailey better than I like VC, so I might just go with keeping Bailey up. We'll we'll see what the we'll see what the coaches play or coaches say. And then to get so it'll be in my email, but because I'm in the middle of having to confirm this, I'll confirm that, and then it updates to current times. Uh, and you see here, Quinn Hughes is hurt, so. So Green thinks that he lacks the quality to hold down a regular spot. So that tells me VZ is a depth player. So he could be a scratch in the NHL, but not a not for to replace for injuries kind of thing or or something, but not necessarily a regular in the lineup. Same thing from Baumgartner, same thing from Boucher probably, yep. So I mean when your coaches are agreeing or have the same thoughts about players, that's usually a good sign of uh, chemistry. I don't know, I don't think there is a chemistry section in this game but I mean if they're saying the same things then you know it's good I've had I've had situations where scouts have said different things about players so it was kind of confusing and that just I mean I guess player uh, scouts have different opinions or one saw a player more than the other kind of thing but when your coaches have the same are saying the same things that's usually a good thing 
so on Asari, so that he's brand new, so they don't they don't want to comment on him just yet. And Bailey, he's not progressing at an acceptable rate, and he believes a player should be on the block. So here's here's the thing. So the co Baumgartner thinks that Bailey's a useful member of the team. And Boucher think is concerned that he's been part of the team for a reasonable amount per period. Usually the coaches will say that if a player is like 24, 25 and older. Not really necessarily if they've been on the team long, but they've been in the league a long time. Which, I mean, Bailey, he's been up and down in the... NHL in the minors for about six years now. This will be his sixth year. Yeah, this will be. His, he's been in five years in his sixth year coming in. Um, so I really don't want to send anyone down, but because I have the bias against Jimmy VZ, unfortunately, I just. I just don't, I don't know. I mean, he's got lots of green in the mental. He's got a decent amount of green in the technical, which includes like his offensive abilities. Um, and his physical is decent. His agility isn't super great. I just remember I read the reports from that the coaches gave me from the training camp and they weren't impressed with him. So you can see in the bottom, he played five games in the preseason and training camp and had two goals, a minus one, two penalty minutes, and only six shots. His shooting percentage was good, but he only had six shots in five games. So he's not even giving himself a chance to ha have success because he's not even shooting a lot. So what we're going to do is send him down. He will have to go on waivers, I believe. Yes. Uh, somebody might pick him up, somebody might not. Not a big deal. He's only, he's not a game changer and he doesn't make a ton of money and his contract expires this year. So, I mean, not a huge deal. Put him on waivers. And then I can, I can immediately send him to Utica while he's waiting to be claimed or not claimed on waivers. And then that fixes the roster being at the maximum. And then what we can do, because I don't want Louis Erickson in the lineup, we will put Noel Asari in the lineup, in his place, and then that way our coaches can see, see what he's made of, see what kind of player he is and if he's gonna fit. And then after maybe the first month of the season, I can ask the coaches for a report on him, if he's any good or not, or not so. <clears throat> Let's go back to. Oh, excuse me. Oh, you know what? We have to set jersey numbers because we've got Thomas Hickey, who's a new player. What is. Uh, I don't know why we have Petrus Palmu up here. It's kind of odd that he's here. I don't. Not quite sure where it is even. It says he's. Oh no! It says he's in the. On his team in. Uh, in Finland, I believe. Uh. Oh no! He's on loan, until May. I see. Okay. So technically he's on our roster ish, but he's on loan to the Finnish the Finnish team, I believe. So Okay, let's give Thomas Hickey a number. Let's give him number five, I guess. Um And then what if we go Oh, can't wear number eleven. Johan, what is that, buddy? You can wear number 15. No no number 11 on the Canucks. You should know better. Bad. 
Um, oh, yeah, sorry, I already picked his number, 55. Okay, that's fine. And... Tours number 62. We've got Quinn Hughes Hurt, Hyde Hickey, Edler, Gabriel Carlson. Yeah, that all looks good to me. And submit the numbers. Um, captains are set, I think. Yeah, we've got Miller, Edler, and Horvat. Uh, team needs so this is where you can kind of see what the coach thinks of the team and then you can set what you want for the team needs trade philosophy favor young players you can focus on winning now which we're kind of focusing on winning currently but long term as well which is why I put favor young players because you want to get players uh, for the core the current core which is young uh, that can grow with the rest of the core uh, so he says there's obvious holes and within the system we should especially target a first line left winger, a solid right winger, a depth defenseman, a goalie prospect, and a blue line prospect. And he wants, to, wants us to focus on improving the roster step by step. Which I mean, I don't know why he's saying left winger. We've got JT Miller, we've got Hoglander in the top six, and we have Besser in the top six on the right side. So, I'm, unless he's planning on having, uh, like, Pedersen, Horvat, Miller, or Pedersen, Miller, Horvat, or something, which it could do, but then I'm going to have to go and spend more money on another top-line left winger, which we don't have. It's cheaper to put Miller on the left side in the top six and then get a third line scoring winger instead and then if Travis Green wants to do the, the th three line scoring lines he can do that and that third line winger can go in the top six somewhere if he wants um, whoops okay now go to what am I trying to do here go to tactics we go ask coach there we go so he's got a sorry on the fourth line uh, on the wing of Sutter he's got Hoglander on the fourth line for some reason and Pearson on the second line which that's okay I prefer to have him on the third line and then uh, you've got Tyler Tyler Mott, like, I'll show you his profile and scouting report in a minute, but he is a surprisingly highly tutored player in this game. Maybe not necessarily a bonafide top six forward, but he's definitely a solid third line center with the possibility of becoming a top six forward. Um, so let's confirm that. Go to Tyler Mott. Look at all this green. And I mean, his speed could probably be even higher, but uh, scouting report, three star, three star. Good for 10 goals, 15 assists. Uh, two way forward all around center. Report card. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, and if and when I got the when I got the request coach report on him, the coaches had even better things to say than his scouting report. So he's definitely a mainstay in the in the on the team. Um, oh hey, Blue Devils, hot tub? I don't have a hot tub. <laughs> if you got a hot tub, then I'm I'm coming over. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I don't even care where you are. I'll uh, 
I'll fly. <laughs> okay, let's see. So we've got our game, that's why I was setting up the lineup. We've also got that trade in the queue, so we'll see if it gets accepted. Let's continue that. Don't tempt you, okay. <laughs> okay, so it shows essentially all the NHL games that are going on this for this date. You notice how it says evening there, that's because it's the evening. Um, you can view the game, but it's just like, it's a, it's a big, like not, it's not really a proper game you're watching. It's just like a bunch of little, uh, little dots going around. Like uh, here, I'll show you and I'll just fast forward it after, uh, we go to <laughs> a GF. No, I do not have a girlfriend. I, I have a wife though. <laughs> Uh, okay. Unfollowing, oh no. So you go to coach games yourself. <laughs> and then you can play, oh, it won't let me play? That's lame. Maybe it'll reset if I go like this and go continue. Oh, there we go. Now it'll let me proceed. So you just got to press continue and then I can, there we go. Okay. And then, uh, so drop the puck. They don't have wives. <laughs> I gonna do here? What was I gonna do? Oh, settings. Uh, here we go. Settings, so you can uh, turn the clock speed up, and you can turn the action speed up too. So if you have it on slow, it'd be super slow, and you'll be like basically watching a real life game in real time. <laughs> Oh, that's loud. That's really loud. My apologies. How do you turn that down? I'll just turn my... Okay, well let's. <laughs> Flustered. <laughs> It was really loud. <laughs> oh wow, okay. There we go, that's done. I think there's a setting you have to do before you start playing.
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be a tease. <laughs> no one likes a tease, I know. We got owned by Edmonton, terribly owned. And oh yeah, we gotta continue. So that's so playing that game didn't actually uh, sim through the day. It just took us still to the evening, just post game kind of thing. So look at this, 39 emails. <laughs> okay, so I, I invited uh, this guy to a tryout. He's only 20 years old and he was a free agent, so I just decided to give him a tryout. He doesn't have very good numbers, but might as well let him practice with the team. I'll uh, scout the player, so I'll set one of my scouts on him while he's playing, if he plays, but it'll be while he's practicing too. Uh, so these are the scout reports. Um, my head scout is scouting for the draft, so he's sending me uh, for like 17, 18 year olds. Um, so I don't, I don't really look at these ones too in depth because I'll get to see, I'll get to see all the scouting work he put in uh, when it, the draft time comes. Um, but it does take a lot of time to look at each individual player, so I try not to look at all the all the under under twenty one year olds unless I'm gonna make a trade. And you can see, like, uh, I can approach to sign, but it won't let me actually sign him because he's still draft eligible. Other and it would also if if another team already drafted him, it would say approach to trade for as well so uh, 17 17 21 so this guy is in the Russian League he is 21 so he might not be draft eligible anymore not super high on him though it Gradeen says he could be a three-star player defenseman offensive potential his, uh, his contract with his Russian team is uh, in April, his, it ends. So I wouldn't be able to sign him right now, I would just be able to make an offer and then he could do like a verbal agreement. And then when April comes around, it would go through and then he'd be on the team. Uh, so he could probably play with us in the playoffs or just play in the next season with us. Um, so let's see if I actually want this player so like right there, he is 21, but his defense is uh, a D minus. His hockey sense is a D plus. Right there, you're a defenseman, and you're already 21, and you're are still a D plus and D minus on those things. I would expect at least a C in those. Green thinks he's a future depth player though, and he's got the shot and scoring ability right there in a B already. So he might be worth a look. I will add him to my shortlist. And we'll see if any of these attributes improve at, at the end of the season when his contract expires. Um, let's see. All these are 17, 18 year olds.
we got a big scouting update from him as well. A nice big list of players. He's even a 21 year old, but he's only two stars. This guy, 17. He doesn't even have any stars next to him, so I wonder if he's like more of an unknown. He's got no similar players projected. Um, yeah, so he's... The scout doesn't know a ton about him. That's basically what that means. He's got A-plus hockey sense, which is... If he's not super good in some of these other things, you can teach. Hockey sense is hard to teach. And he's only 17. Uh, so he might be a late round pick. Um, but he does have the potential to do something with that. But I'm not going to spend too much time in that. Uh, let's see, a 26 year old from Lars Lindgren, who's uh, scouting in Finland. His, so these are basically guys that are free agents, will be free agents out of the other leagues in Europe that you can maybe sign. It says he's currently a three-star player, uh, third-line playmaking type of player. It says he could get around 90 points in his current league in 52 games, which is like, that's huge. His comparable is Ben Street, who's a depth player. Not necessarily a... And we got Thomas Lindgren put his opinion on it. So I usually trust Lindgren. So if Lindgren agrees with the other scout, then I like the player. But he's only given this guy a one star. And we check his report card. It's not super great. And he's already, he's 26. So this is basically what he is. Basically an AHL type of player. Might put up the points in the AHL, but not someone I'm going to put a bunch of effort in to get. So this guy's 28, so he's basically, he is what he is. He's not getting better. He's probably going to get worse before he gets better. He's a three-star player. This is coming from Lars Lindgren. What does Gradine think? One star, so. I'm going to skip all these players because I'm not right now looking for players like this but it is good to have them that have them scout so like look at this guy 28 year old he's got quite a lot of green for a guy playing in for Brynäs the European League which means he could be a depth guy in the NHL he's a three-star guy third line talent good for about 30 points in 52 games which, I mean, the points, if he's not going to be a top six guy, the points aren't a huge thing. It's more like like Cody Eakin right there. So he's more of a, a bottom six guy, most likely for stuff. So, like, he's got really good stats. And Lars Lindgren thinks currently he's a depth, he would be a depth player for us. So, like, a guy that we would, uh, we would throw in if for injuries or, and stuff. Sorry, I just got a text. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so all those Bs and the, I mean, the C plus in defense isn't the greatest, um, but he is a le center left wing. Um, if we look at what Gradine thinks of him, he doesn't think he's good enough for the current lineup, but he keeps the report card the same. So in my mind, that says that he's probably a depth guy, but like a tweener, kind of like, uh, what's his name that we just put on waivers? We are, we have guys better than him, so there's no point really looking at him, basically is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> Um, oh, Anton Rodin, former Canucks prospect. I love this guy. I just he just has really bad in uh had the bad knee problems when we were trying to bring him in. 
he's a he's an elite player in Brynäs in the Swedish league though. So I mean, saying he's like Carl Haglin, uh, that's what Lindgren is saying about him. Gradin thinks he's a skilled fourth line player. So he could he could be a player for us, but okay. Here's another caveat. He's got a contract that doesn't end until 2024. Um, one thing that this game doesn't do is is it not very clear on contract. Uh, go to contracts. So the clause in his contract is a foreign offer release clause and a relegation clause. I don't know exactly what the relegation clause means, but the foreign offer release clause, I think, is what it sounds like. Where if he gets a contract offer from uh, a team like the NH in the NHL or AHL or something, that he he is allowed to leave before his contract is up. So I could try offering him a contract and see what happens. Because um, having a, sc a skilled fourth line winger would be pretty sweet. That's kind of what, where the NHL is going. Add depth scoring. And he could jump up in the lineup if he needed him in the third, fourth, third, second, first line. For a couple games, somebody gets hurt or something like that. And this would be, this would not be for this season, even if the, I don't think. Unless, depending on what the, but we'll, depending on what the clause means, but we'll offer, we'll approach to sign him. Sometimes what this will say is what the player wants. So this is what what we would set his status on the team as. And so here the hashtag is what he's not interested in. He doesn't want to be a regular player or a fringe player. And this one means he's not allowed because he's not a prospect anymore and he's not young anymore. <laughs> so he's not interested in these four things or these two things. He wants to be a core player or a key player. Unfortunately, I can't promise him that he's a core player. I can suggest him as a regular player and see if he accepts that role. He wants to sign... Oh, okay, so his... So his clause in his contract... What does part-time even mean? I don't even know what that even means. Maybe, oh, maybe that's two way and one way. Maybe that's what that means. Um, if okay, so his if I sign him to this contract, it would start in July of twenty one. So he he's allowed to be a free agent after this season, even though his contract goes until twenty twenty four. So it has the option to to come out. So I'll, let's offer him the contract. He'll be 30 by the time he plays for us, if he comes out here. Um, if we, he, well, he wants under a mil. He wants a signing bonus. So we'll just offer him what he's asking for. Although maybe I'll just add a little bit more to the signing bonus. Um, let's go to, let's go to 75k. Uh, because I don't have him as a as a core player, and he wants to be a core player. But I don't know how good he is. Like the scouting says, he's a fourth line skilled player, which would not make him, which would not make him a core player. Oh, and down here it explains it. Player can move at any time during an international transfer window, which opens. Uh, June 7th, 2021. So at the end of the season, after the playoffs and stuff, uh, he can be signed, and then the contract will start July 1st, which is the NHL free agency window. So let's offer him that. I don't even know if he has any NHL contract, other NHL contracts coming anyways. So we'll see. He's got a, a NHL quality deking, an NHL quality passing, NHL quality stick handling, and an NHL quality wrist shot. His slap shot is kind of weak. Positioning isn't great. Poke checking isn't great. Off off puck is not 
in the higher end. Hitting isn't great. Faceoffs aren't great. Uh, deflections are below average. He's not aggressive. His anticipation's good. Brave. His creativity is about average. Determination, flair, influence, teamwork, work rate is all good. His skating is all good. His balance isn't super good. His strength. His strength is right there where you need to be at a minimum to be in the NHL, basically. So... We go to history. He's already at five points in four games in the SHL this year. So, I mean, he's lighting it up, basically. Hopefully, he has a good year and signs with us. Basically, is what uh, is what uh, what happens. Um, and this is Bish Clark Bishop. I don't even have a scouting report on him, so. Anyways, let's go. I'm gonna quickly go in the settings. Uh... Oh, I have to okay that. Now the settings. There we go. Preferences. Uh, measurement wages. Oh, you can change the wages to weekly and monthly. That's funny. Auto save. Oh, auto save every week. Let's set that. I had it. I had it crash on me because I clicked on something weird, and it didn't auto save. So I I lost like whew, a bunch of hours of work I put into it. Unfortunately. Um. Rolling files. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, background games, print. Eh, don't care about that. See. Tutorial screens. Window resolution, traditional skins, oh. game clock, uh, score displays, attributes, sound, here we go, play the sounds off, let's turn that off right now. <laughs> um, highlighting, player attribute highlighting, what does that mean? see what that does see if that makes any real changes um, okay oh network anything in there keyword and screen that's all good okay I want to see what that highlighting player thing is. Oh, there we go. I see. Okay, so these are key attributes. Okay. So deflection, I think his deflections are probably higher than that, but you know. What does it have? Whoops. What does it have his face offs as? His face offs are decent. I don't think they're actually that good in real life. I think his face offs are one of his weaknesses in the game. Hitting is probably not a weakness. Deflections aren't. Checking isn't. Aggression isn't. Um, I would say balance is probably one of his weaknesses. Weird. So you can highlight, you can choose what kind of player he is, I guess. Weird. Oh, highlight. For him, for this player specifically, 
highlight his finesse goal highlight him as a finesse goal scoring center so what are the key attributes of a finesse goal scoring center basically i see i would think passing would be a finesse key attribute too but that's just me i guess but his passing is elite like it's only two away from the highest it can be So if we go back, um, still haven't found out if that trade has been accepted or rejected. So let's continue on. It's telling me the results of these games. I don't really care. <laughs> uh, replaying. Our next game's on the fifth, so we're still on the third. Uh, oh, they rejected the trade. So I offer them Jake Keeley, a first, a second, a, a first, and two seconds for Sam Reinhardt. They don't, it's because they, they're hesitant to give up a key player like Sam Reinhardt. <clears throat> so I might come back to Sam Reinhardt, but I'm going to look at, let's go to scouting. So I can go to my short list of players and then I can filter by wingers and team. Obviously, this list has also has uh, like prospects and stuff. Uh, Matthew Joseph was a guy I was looking at because he's only 23, but Let's see physical goal scoring winger. Uh, power winger possibly. Oh, you know what? You can go through these and see what type of winger he is. The game automatically assume, uh, says that he's a he's a grinding winger. But you can see where he needs to be to be a finesse defensive winger, which, like, he is. He's basically a finesse defensive winger because he's green in all of the attributes that you need to be one. Uh, Just a defensive winger, he's also that. Um, goal scoring, doesn't have a great slap shot. Deflections or deking are basically average, so he's not, would not be considered a finesse goal scoring winger. What about just a goal scoring winger? No, his slap shot isn't great, that's why. Um, Playmaking winger. Uh, deflections and deking apparently are part of playmaking for some reason. I guess deking is part of playmaking for sure. Um, he's definitely got some finesse to him based on what I'm seeing here. Physical playmaking maybe? Uh, all around? All around seems to be the type of fit he is. Uh, finesse is not quite power, not quite because of the deflections, but he, he's only 23, he can improve. He's average at deflections too, so it doesn't mean he's bad at them, he's just average. Enforcer doesn't have the high aggression. So I think the best one is all around. He might not be like the top end player, but he's definitely 
he definitely could become a contributing top six forward. Um, he's already got four goals in nine games for Tampa, and he's probably not even playing in the top six or top nine even for Tampa at the moment. His... Um, So Thomas Gradine is the guy I trust. Look at Thomas Gradine. Thomas Gradine's actually got him rated higher than the guy who brought him to me. Brought his brought my attention to him. Although Lou Crawford still sees him as developing into a key player. Currently he sees him as a depth player. Jonathan Bates, same thing, but he's got his report card a lot higher. Thomas Gradine basically just puts those two together and says... Oh no, Gradine says he would not be good enough for the current lineup. Weird. That's interesting. I, I actually like him, and the two other scouts say that he would be a depth player for us. But if you look at his... Um, he's already a three-star player. His projected role is a checking first line potential forward, similar to Andre Burakovsky, who is doing that for Colorado currently. And they're saying he's good for 15 goals, 15 assists. So basically, he can be, he could be the middle a middle six, like a third line scoring guy to add some depth scoring, to who could turn into a top six winger. I actually like that because if I if I trade for him, I put all my all my money into him or not money, all my all my uh, put my trading all my like the assets I'm willing to give up for a, a guy like that into Matthew Joseph, then I can I can maybe try and acquire a a veteran a veteran forward to be in the top six now. And then after a year or so, Matthew Joseph could take over while that veteran either moves down or we don't re-sign him or trade him or something. Either way, it would it would be a way to add depth. Instead of adding one super high-end player, add a player who can turn into a super high-end player but is also a contributor on the third line. And then add a add a contributor like a, a similar to Tanner Peterson to a current line in the top six. Because, I mean... It'd be nice if the Canucks made the playoffs this in this season, but it's not like it's it's part of the expectation, I believe. If we go to board confidence, um, and. Maybe it's not in board confidence. It's said at the beginning of this, like what they expect. So uh, if we go back to, what was that? How did I even get there? I was, I was looking at Tampa's players for some reason. I don't know. Oh no, I was looking at my list. Go to scouting. Short list, right, 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 right. Uh, filter for wingers, teams, and then, yeah, we had Matthew Joseph here. Yanni Gord's another player, except he's on the older side. I actually tried acquiring Yanni Gord because Tampa Bay is uh, right up against the cap, and they'd probably be looking to get rid of a player like, like that, but he's a very, very good player. Uh, physical goal scoring player. Not he is a center naturally, but he's not great at faceoffs. So that's kind of a thing that I don't technically essentially need a, a center, but the fact that he can play center is good. If you go to positions here, it says he's a natural center, so it's where he plays his best. But he's accomplished on either all the forward positions, so you don't need to worry about the 
putting him at center if if you don't need to. Um, Bobby Ryan's a guy I'd be interested in getting as a short-term top six guy. The game has him has him listed as a goal-scoring winger. He's 33. He's only being paid a mil for the this season, so I could essentially just trade for him if he has a good year, re-sign him or or trade him at the deadline or something, depending on how the team is doing. Um, it was just I, they the uh, Detroit rates him so high. It's difficult. I don't want to trade too much for a guy like Bobby Ryan, but he would be useful. I did the same thing with Jonas Donskoy, but he's uh, they don't want to get rid of him. Warren Fogle is a, a similar player to Matthew Joseph. Um, I believe he's actually rated higher. He's currently a four-star and can be a five-star. They're saying he's like Anthony Duclair, but, but taller. Uh, he is, he's a year older, though, so that's probably why he's already a, de a year developed more than Matthew Joseph is. And they're saying he's currently good for 20 goals, 20 assists, so he basically could fit in the top six right now. So essentially another, a more gritty version of Sam Reinhardt. And he can play all three positions. Uh, what? He's a natural on the right side. Tyler Ennis, I have in, I have interest because he was put on waivers twice, and so I have a scouting report. I sent a scout to scout him. I haven't gotten it back yet, but I want to see what they think because he could be a cheap get. He they, if teams keep putting him on waivers, then he should be cheap to get in trade too, or or I can just wait for him to go on waivers again. Because he was put on waivers by Edmonton, and I ended up picking up a defenseman instead of Ennis. And Arizona picked him up, and then they put him on waivers too, and then nobody picked him up. <laughs> so, I just want to see what the scouts say about him. Perlini I want to get, but he's currently uh, in a contract with uh, in somewhere. Yeah, let's see... So, contract, he's in a contract with, doesn't say who he's with. Here we go. So he's in the NL, Swiss National League, okay. But he's 24, he's still got developing to do, so could be a, a good player to pick up. Uh, Anton Rodin, we already made an offer for him. Um, so if we go back, I think Matthew Joseph or Warren Fogle could be possibilities. So keep those guys in the back of my mind for possibilities. If we get Warren Fogle, he's basically going to be the guy I get instead of Sam Reinhardt because he's worth basically the same as Reinhardt is. Same age and both most like Well, Fogel probably isn't playing in the top six in Carolina because they're so deep. Uh, but Reinhardt definitely, he's playing on the first line because they, Buffalo isn't as deep. But Fogel could be on, the, on our top six. He could be in our second or first line. So um, I just want to go and see what uh, NHL player or NHL teams are what am I trying to see here oh, go to trade center there we go and we go to availability Let's see if there's anybody good that's available gnomes a defenseman What's camp? He's a don't have a scouting report on him. He's not too bad. Probably a bottom six forward though. Um, hmm. 
Nate Thompson. I've already got kind of a Nate Thompson kind of guy, and he's he's uh not that great, I don't think. Go to team needs. What does Carolina need? They're searching for depth at right wing and a prospective right winger. And they're looking to in to strengthen their current roster. Go to Buffalo, they're looking to add, well, we already looked at that. And then uh, we go to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is looking to add t a top two defenseman, a first line left winger, a depth center, a center prospect, and a prospective right winger. And they're looking to overall add seasoned veterans to their roster. I actually, before I kind of figured out all the stuff in this game, I tried trading Sutter to them and Beagle and Brussel all separately, and they wouldn't accept any of them. Because <laughs> I was like, well, you want veterans? There you go. You want seasoned vets? Beagle's got a cup? Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, so if we look at Tampa Bay... We make it want to make a trade with them. <laughs> um, let's see. Go filter by position forwards. And we go by interest. So they're definitely not going to trade Stamkos, Kutra, Point, Sorelli. Maybe Palat because he's got the big contract. Um, Moran, do I have a scouting report on him? No. He's not, definitely, probably not, like, going to be playing the NHL anytime soon. Unless he has a really big development season. Because of these all these red spots um, but that mental is really good the physical isn't the greatest speed is good though which is important like the, the acceleration agility and speed being good is at least a sign that he can get better at the other things um, he's playing in Syracuse right now so he's playing the AHL Matthew Joseph so they've got four dots beside him, essentially the same as what uh, as what Buffalo has for Sam Reinhardt. Um, are we able to see? Oh yeah, we can see their lines. Okay, yeah. See, they got Matthew Joseph on the third line. He could probably jump into the top six for us if we don't end up getting another winger. Go back. Um, what was I trying to look at? Uh, see their report? This is a report from my assistant GM on what he thinks the depth chart looks like and who who fits where kind of thing. So they they think that so they got Mitchell Stevens playing in the NHL. Who's a potential second line player like similar to Kyle Turris, I guess, but I mean right now Kyle Turris is whatever. Uh, Gradine's got him as a potential third line all around center and the report card is decent but currently he would not fit in the lineup which is weird because Tampa Bay has him in their lineup and but he says he's a future depth player Jonathan Bates has him as a depth player and a future core player so, I mean, he's right, he's right in there being a, between a, a second line forward and a fourth line forward. 
so I'm thinking he's probably just gonna probably end up a third. Um, they've even they've got Gabrick ahead of Gaudreau, even though Gabrick's like should be retiring because I thought he was he's like he's out for eleven months. He's probably gonna retire at the end of the year when his contract expires. Um, so yeah, they've got they've got Joseph under Tyler Johnson even. They got Pat Maroon ahead of Kaloran some for some reason. Or no, they sorry. My assistant GM has Pat Maroon ahead of Kaloran. I think Kaloran's probably better than that. He's only a, he's strictly a left winger, so his faceoffs don't matter. He's not a great deeker or deflector. He's a, he's essentially a scoring checking winger. I don't have a scouting report on him, unfortunately. But he is on the older side. Um, so I mean I think I think Joseph should probably he will probably be higher up on our depth chart so if we go to roster and report for us we have two nhl players that play right wing as their natural side <laughs> and then under that we've got a guy in the minors who's might not even end up being an nhl player and then we got pod colson who's definitely going to be a top six guy at some point but not right now and then these guys who are in junior <laughs> Our center is really, really deep. They've got, for some reason, they've got Boyd and Beagle ahead of Larson. And at least they've got Asari, uh, Asari ahead of them. And then they've got Louis Erickson, or they've got Brassell ahead of Louis Erickson. And, well, they've got, so I've got Erickson up because he's has to be up. But I don't have a lot of right wing depth, so I need to. I did trade away two guys that play right wing in Cole Lind and I can't remember the other guy's name, but he was a prospect. Um, I did trade them away, so that would that's two spots that I just got rid of. I'll try and I'll try and replace the. I'll try and replace that. Um, with like free agent uh, prospect signings and obviously through the draft and stuff, we're really deep deep at center and all most of these guys can play the wing as well. The only one that's a natural only type center is Horvat. Everyone else can play the wing, so that helps with this. Um, especially McEwen, I don't think he's great at faceoffs. And Barbashev is good at faceoffs, so he can play center. And Asari is not great at faceoffs. And then Tyler Mott is good at faceoffs. So we have Mott and Barbashev can be our centers. We can somehow get rid of Sutter by either sending him down or just scratching him, being a healthy scratch. Um, but we do need, like, Matthew. Joseph will be up here. Bailey's a fourth line forward, so Matthew Joseph will be up here. If we get him. Uh, and that's part of the thing, too, is we have to actually end up getting him. For some reason, they have Jack Rathbone down here under all these guys. Not sure why. I think he should be playing in the NHL, although his... I mean, his checking isn't super great, but his offense is good. He'd, he'd be a, if he played sheltered minutes, he'd be great. I just don't know if the coach wants to do that, so. Uh, anyway, so let's, let's try and make that trade. Try 
try and live up to that four dot four dots that they got there for them we add that Boston first and get rid of that third and put in uh, Florida second they're looking for a top a first line left wing depth at center a center prospect and a perspective of a right winger okay so let's see what we have for players that they might accept we go to forwards and go to interest. No PD, no Miller, no Horvat, no Hoglander, no Besser, no Pearson, no Demont. Maybe McEwen. Um, maybe. I don't want to because I like McEwen. Um, not trading Barbashev. He'll be. He's a good young player for us. Like McEwen, I don't want to either, but he's supposed to be a center. He's not good at faceoffs. He's good at everything else. He's a power. It says he's got. They got him at a power center. I don't think he's a power center. I think he's a, a something winger. But there, there's no choices for that. Maybe a physical defensive center. Or uh, just a defensive center. goal scoring center <laughs> um, all around center maybe uh, grinding center I think that's what he is what did they have him set as a power center it, see, I think his aggression is a little more than what they have it set at um Physical playmaking center, maybe? No. Although his passing is pretty good. I think really, other than the fact that he's not good at phase-offs, he's probably, uh, probably is a power center or like a all-around physical defensive center or something like that. Um, let's do all-around center, I guess. We'll just keep it at power center, I guess. That's what they have it set at. Um, Jonah Gadjevic, surprisingly, the the coaching staff is very disappointed in him. And even Thomas Gradine thinks he's going to get worse before he gets better, even though he's only 21. So, I mean, there's not a lot of interest in him. There's only one dot. But we can add him in there just as a sweetener kind of thing. Um, let's see who can we throw in uh, we could also throw in players with that we just have their rights so you can add rights it says no cash I don't know why that's there um, yeah I'm not sure why it's there but you can't use it add the rights to somebody um, so I've already got I've already traded a uh, Trampkin which I had never had any intent on keeping him anyways we could trade Francis Perron who's probably gonna be a career AHL player or he's not even in the AHL right now he's in uh, he's in the Sweden second tier league which is basically the AHL for that league for those leagues um, you add him. So Ralph Kruger saying it's a bad deal for us, and 
Like, I don't, uh, I don't agree. <laughs> Gadjevich, the coaching staff has soured on him. Perron's not even playing for us. And then these are just some draft picks to get a player who can actually make a difference for us right now. How would it push them above? Because of Gadjevich? He's make oh, he's making more than Perron. That's the problem. They would push them above the salary cap. That's also what I have to take into consideration. So if I, what if I take on a player that is being paid a lot that you don't want? We go to, um, all players, I guess. Oh, we're on mine. We're on mine. We'll go to their players. Uh, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to look at the contracts. So who do they have that they are overpaying? They've got Tyler Johnson. Oof, that's not a contract I want to get, though. They've got... Gavrik's on IR, so they don't have to worry about that. Ander Niels Anders, Anders Nielsen's on IR. Alex Kalorn. I, I would like to see the scouting report on him before I make that type of trade. And plus, he's he is uh, here for two more for two years, so that's not really the type of contract I want to take on. We could look at like a guy like Barkley Gaudreau, or maybe a David Savard, but he's got the high trade value Taylor Radish might be a good one he's only got he's only got the two dots he's he's paid he's not paid a ton he's only he's under a mil but it would help with their would help with their uh, salary cap though um so I add Taylor Radish. I wish I had a scouting report on Maroon. Um, add Taylor Radish who might end up being a fourth line player anyways, but who cares? I think the scouting report says that. Say it's like Bobby Ryan could be a third line potential power forward. So, I mean, that's fine. Um, he is 22. Says he play, he can play center. Oh, it's his, uh, he's accomplished at center. Um, he's a, He's pretty good in the AHL. It's like a second, second, first, second line uh, scoring type of player in the a AHL. Um, what did, oh, I wanted to see something. So it's his shot and his scoring that's that's uh, on the low end. But it, even Thomas Gardine thinks he's got a future as a depth player. He's very strong. Uh, skating isn't super great. His defense is good. So he's essentially a, a, a defensive forward. And if he can get his scoring, he get his scoring touch at the NHL level, he would be a, definitely be a good third, a, a top nine type of forward. So that he'd be worth it to add. Um, let's see. So add him as well with Joseph. We add Peron. Oh, what's going on with the music? The music stopped. 
Why did the music stop? Oh, it's because it's restarting. I see. Okay. Let's see here. Um, we add a... Let's see if we can add more rights, maybe. I have a bit of a soft spot for Manu Artyom Manukian, Manukian because he's he's a small winger. I don't even have a scouting report on him. But he's supposed to be very skilled. Doesn't look like he's quite there, but he is 22, so maybe I should just send him. Jack Malone. has potential, so we don't want to get rid of him. Linus Carlson has potential. Hmm. Let's see what that does. Age interest, lopsided offers. <laughs> it's because I have Taylor Radish too, and he's a two, a two, uh, a two dot player. If I add another draft pick, maybe. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's take Taylor Radish off. And see what they say. I still think it's lopsided. Um, they, it's because they want veteran players. We don't have those types of players that we're willing to give up. Um, maybe instead of a third round pick, we try and add a veteran player that They're all, they're all over here. <laughs> like even Louis Erickson's got the one dot, but he's way too expensive for them. We could see if they want Travis Boyd. Or a Mark Michaelis, maybe. Maybe Jalen Chatfield. Let's see what they think about that. Okay, so they don't like the sound of the offer. So maybe they'll think about it, because I don't know if I want to add too many more players. Especially since if I add another player, I'll have to add another player on their side, because of their, how close to the cap they are. And they can... Well, if I... Let's see. If I go to their interest in keeping... And let's go to contract. What's what's Nielsen's injury? Oh, eleven months with a concussion. Whoa. Uh, what's his against the cat? Buried. So only ha about two thirds of his contract is buried. Hmm. 
his his uh, deal expires at the end of the season. So I could I could add him in there to give them some cap relief. He's only got the one dot. Um, it's lopsided again. <laughs> uh, there's not much I can add for them on their side because like of their cap situation. Um, go let's look at defenseman I gotta look at uh, contracts so somebody that's basically What did they say about Madison Bowie anyways? I didn't say anything really good about him from what I remember. Yeah. Let's see if they would want to take on that. Yeah, I know you don't like Anders Nielsen, Ralph Kruger. I don't, like, he's not coming to the team to play. He's just coming to the team to help make this trade happen so we can get Matthew Joseph. That's all it is. Oh, uh, they don't like, they don't like Bowie, okay. That's not very nice. Um... <laughs> uh, mm. Mitch Elliott's unhappy. I could add him. He's making quite a bit of money, though. Uh, let's make the offer. Like that, That's a lot of three-dot players. And a first and a second for these two players. I think it's worth it, in my mind, because all of these players probably aren't going to end up doing anything anyways. The first and the second are going for Matthew Joseph. All the other stuff is to convince them, I guess. But I think the first and the second is all I needed, and I'm just giving them a bunch of stuff that they seem to have some interest in. So let's make the offer. See what happens. Rejected already? They immediately rejected it? What? I've never seen that happen where they reject it that quickly. <laughs> uh, they. <sighs> Wait, let me go back to the mail. What did they say? What part was Matthew Joseph? <sighs> it's very difficult. It's weird because Ralph Kruger's saying we shouldn't do it, and Tampa Bay doesn't want to do it either. It's like, why not? <laughs> I, I want to do it. <laughs> Come on. Um. Hmm. financial effects we'd like to point out.
push us above the league cap. Okay, so let's... Yeah, see, that's why I was adding uh, Anders Nielsen. What other injuries do you have? Oh, Kucherov. Kucherov's going to push you over the cap. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a hard team to make a deal with because of that. They've got Kucherov coming back at some point. Because he, like in real life, they waited until the playoffs to bring him in because they're smart. But in the game, I don't know if that's going to happen. Because once he's better, they'll start playing him because the computer doesn't think about that kind of stuff. Uh, and he clearly was fully recovered before the season ended and they just kept him out of the lineup because of cap reasons. So I might just have to do a straight up draft pick trade and then I can try and recoup my draft picks for these players that I was going to trade. Or I just keep like Mitch Elliott does have some potential. He is 22 now, but he's supposed to be like a offensive type defenseman, right-handed, which are hard to find. Although, I mean, Green doesn't like him very much, so they're saying he's saying he's going to get worse. So, this report card isn't too bad, though. So, if we remove all these players, remove this. And we add picks. And oh, we can also add rights. Players that don't have any contracts with us. Um, I just don't know if I want to add any of those guys. But instead of adding a no like too many draft picks, we could add a player. Maybe Francis Perron. And then we can add draft picks. Uh, so I already got the first. I don't want to give up the other first. Uh, we've got, we can add a third. We can add a second from 2022. Ugh, they're still saying lopsided. Come on. What if I add another player's rights? Man, you can. Okay, I'm just gonna make the offer because this is pissing me off. Pissing me off. It's pissing me right off. <laughs> too many draft picks man that's a lot of draft picks but I really want this player so I might have to do it uh, they're probably going to reject it but I gotta try yeah it was immediately rejected <laughs> at least they're, re they're at least they're like not waiting a whole day to say what's, what it is what's going on okay so we might have to move on to a different player then if that's gonna be like that. Um, yeah, because the only way, the only trade I'd be able to make with Tampa is getting one of those contracts back, and I don't really want to do that because those players are still worth something. Like they're still three dots, four dots, but they're they just have too many big contracts, so I can't really. I don't really want to take on a big contract like that. We've already got Lou. We've got our, already got all our other bad contracts in the minors right now, besides Louis Erickson. So let's look at uh, salary cap chart again. A, a team like Detroit that has a lot of space could be a good one, because then we can send some players back I mean it doesn't they don't even need to have a lot of space they just need to have some space so they can take a player back um, 
Toronto even has some space. Tampa has zero space. Um, I wonder, hmm, I wonder if I make a two-part trade. Hmm. I, I'm just kind of thinking as well, like, if real GMs in real life have these types of conversations with other scouts and stuff like that, like, when when uh, trades don't go, th don't, when trades get rejected and stuff, if they uh, are like, oh, no, and then you have to think and add stuff, and then you're like, oh, screw it, I'm moving on to another team. And then they, and then they come up with a, a big plan, like what I'm coming up with. So if I trade for either Kalorn or trade for somebody like Kalorn or Coleman or who else is making a lot that they want to probably get rid of. They probably want to get rid of uh, Johnson, who they have till 2024. So if we go back there go to forwards um, so Tyler Johnson is only a three dotted player it's probably because he's 30 now although he's a very versatile player he would be a good he would be a good top six player he's just his contract is until 2024. He's going to be... He'll be 34. For 5 million. So what my idea here is... Is we trade for him and then try and flip him for picks. And then use those picks to try and get like a Matthew Joseph or a either flip him for picks or flip him for a decent prospect and then try and flip the picks or whatever to another player another team and then try and get whatever we get back and send it back to Tampa for a Matthew Joseph or send it to Buffalo for Maybe we could trade Tyler Johnson for one of the other players we wanted. Maybe he'd be a good piece, but he would also still be a good piece to have and we have the cap space. It just I just it's that it's that term that kills me. We just got rid of Myers and we've sent all the other players down. So it's just like I don't want to add another term to overpaid-ish type player. He, I mean, he's decent. He's not bad. Offensively, he's not st as good as he was. Um, he's got a good wrist shot. His passing is good. Like, he'll, he'll play good with star players. There's that, I mean, I guess. So, <sighs> it just hurts me to have to do something like this. And he's not untradeable, so there's that. He's not untradeable. He's three dots. He's three dots. So we add him. I shouldn't have to give up too much for him. I could even just give up rights. Like a Francis Perron and a... Uh... Wait, let's just see what one player... So Ralph Kruger doesn't like Tyler Johnson. I know. I know why you don't like him. I know why you don't like him. I don't know how that's a lopsided offer. Yeah. <laughs> You're. You don't have cap space. Like, come on. I'll go this guy too. Uh, 
they okay there we go so they would need to take time to consider this offer so if I'm giving them that and then I maybe add a third oh they don't like the sound of it because I added the third um, so if I add a fourth we're not sure if this offer is any good for us See, that's, that's a contemplation statement to me. So, let's see. Did the trade happen? Rejected? Oh. Come on, I gotta get something back if I'm giving you two three dots for one three dot. That, seemed, that just seems silly. If they're not, like... What if I take the fifth rounder? Oops, not mine. What if I take the fifth that you have? Let's just offer it. Ugh, reject it again? Okay, we'll take the draft pick off the table. Just give me Tyler Johnson at this point. <laughs> Rejected still? Okay, I'm not... You don't even want him. Like, you're... He's one of your overpaid players. Um... I mean, if they're, they're giving me 5,000... Or 5,000... 5, 5 million in cap... They can they can take an actual player that we have the rights to or that we have signed. So we go to what about, what about goalies? Who was I gonna trade Jake Keeley? See if they would take Jake Keeley. We could definitely consider this offer. Okay. If you could definitely consider it, how about you give me a third round draft pick back? It clears you cap space. Like you gotta you gotta consider it. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's add the let's try the fourth one again rejected okay add the fifth and then if I if they reject the fifth I'm just gonna try it with all three players and see what happens Remove the fifth and just try it as is. Reject it still. Why? They don't want to part ways with him. They're going to have to. <laughs> it's going to have to happen. What if I sent you Florida's third rounder? Let's try it. Still rejected. Okay, so they're just not giving him up. I'm not going to add more to this stupid trade. <laughs> I'm not going to, like, over super overpay. This was already a bit of an overpay. But I might... Okay, what what is Kalorn? Let's take a look at Kalorn. Uh, why am I back here? Okay, no, oh, let's... New offer. Wait, what? Why are all the players removed? That's dumb. Okay, so let's go... Forwards... Uh, contract. That's what we need to look at. So Kalorn's there, and he's only a two. 
a two dot and he's actually paid less about half a mil less than Tyler Johnson but he's also signed until 2023 so a year less as well than Tyler Johnson but I believe he's also like one or two years older one year older Kalorn's from Canada I thought he was American Uh, he knows French. Okay, if I'm not gonna try it because I don't have a scouting report on Kalorn, I'm not going to try and overpay at all for him. I'm gonna try and only do a fair trade. If that doesn't work, we're going to have to move on to somebody else. Um, so we'll go to add rights. Would you take Francis Perron, a three-dotted player, for a two-dotted player? Like, it's a two-dotted player for a three-dotted player. This has to... You have to... Like, I'm... This is probably a bit of an overpayment because of the three dots and the two dots, but Francis Perron is not even playing for us. So if they like that, freaking do it, take it, man. <sighs> okay. Um, what's another player? What was it, Manukin? Maybe Manukin. We like the sound of this offer. Let's just offer it. Rejected still, so they don't want to get rid of. They don't want to get rid of those guys. They want to add, and they don't want to get rid of. It's just like you can't really do. It's not going to happen for you. You're not going to get the players that you need because you're not giving up any other players. So it's your fault. I tried. I tried. This isn't EA. This isn't EA NHL 21. So kind of stuff doesn't always work. Um, let's see. Washington. I'm trying to think of who's got right wings that might want to get rid of. What does Philly, Philadelphia have on the right wing? Voracek Konechny, he's probably worth a ton though. Joel Farabee, he's very young. Nolan Patrick, still young. I need somebody like... I mean, it could be a guy in his 30s. But a long-term guy would be like an Oscar Lindblom or or something like that. Or Trick Konechny or something. Um... You know what? We go back. Um, let's go to my list. Where's the scouting part? Scouting short list. Let's see. I still don't have a scouting report on Tyler Ennis. Although I do have to continue with some games if I want to do that. <laughs> Or continue some days. Uh, Jonas Donskoy, he's quite overpaid and 
Colorado already has a lot of cap space. I mean, he's not super overpaid. He's got the ability. He's just not a top six forward, like a, a pure top six forward. And he's, they probably don't want to trade him. Tyler Bertuzzi is basically untradeable for Detroit. Bobby Ryan... He would be, if I get Bobby Ryan, he would be a secondary guy to somebody else. Like, a, like if I try to get a, um, a younger guy that's maybe not ready to be a top six, but who is, who would be taken over, like I said earlier. Um, uh, let's go to page two. Yeah, so I need to go to oh, let's go to um, let's see NHL teams. What does Winnipeg got for wingers here? Um, Timo Mayer, Timo Meyer. Kevin LeBanc, the young player, let's make it 4.7 mil, that's, that's actually a, a cheap deal for what Kevin LeBanc could be for them. to the shortlist but also see if we can what we can do for trade so he's a four dotted player San Jose wants to add a first line right wing a goalie prospect a blue line prospect and a prospective winger and they want to maintain their existing roster so they basically just want to give up draft picks for those things that they're asking for um, so that's not going to work <clears throat> the thing I have to do is look at team needs. Looking at look at a team that's looking that's okay with making a change to the roster. Um like Arizona's looking to strengthen little by little. If, if it says maintaining their roster at all, then it's like, it's basically a no-go. Caroline is looking to strengthen their current roster. Um, Colorado's interested in veteran players. Maybe... They have cap space. I wonder if they would. Give me like a third for. Like, mm, I don't know. For maybe a Madison Bowie. higher pick than that? Wow, they don't have any seconds. <laughs> you still think it's a bad deal? For Madison Bowie? Should I ask for another pick?
Madison Bowie is the only part of the deal, so... Okay. Let's offer that and see what they say. And for some reason it's not updating. Why was the Tampa Bay one not up updating like right away and this one's not? That's kind of weird. Put a different song on, although I like this song. Uh... Let's put hits on, hit soundtrack. Oh, there's a lot of singing in these songs. Let's go. Let's try this one. I might fall asleep. <laughs> um. Actually, it doesn't sound too bad. I might just leave it on that for now. Okay. So, we're not playing today, so I don't really know why it keeps telling me though this. We don't play until the 5th, and we're on the 3rd right now. Let's see if anybody claims Jimmy VZ or not. Jimmy! Alright, 14 emails. Let's see. Recommended players. Uh... Oh, this guy. What's the report? Could be a third, a three star player, all around center. Could be around a point per game in college. And his contract or his rights expire in 20 after this season and he's only 21 he's in umass Ooh, his report card is ugly though what does gradine think no gradine doesn't think he would do anything 
23 year old defenseman oh man that's a lot of red that's and he's 23 so that's uh so vz didn't get clear didn't get uh claimed so he's already in utica so i don't have to worry about that um <sighs> Nate Thompson is on waivers. Um, Yannick Weber's on waivers. So I guess we'll sim through another day because the the trade that I offered hasn't been uh, they haven't said anything yet. Sim right up to game day. Okay. Don't need to watch any of these games. So let's get through that part. I've been sitting here for three hours and 17 minutes. Wow. Oh, a lot must be going on right now. Wow. And only one email. Oh, it's because it's still the eve. Uh, what does it say? So, oh, I got I got my scouts to watch Yan Ruta because he's a potential defenseman I was going to trade for, but I already got my defenseman, so all good. They like him, though. Although he is playing in Syracuse right now for some reason. He's a decent player, though. I don't know. He's probably playing in Syracuse because of the salary. <laughs> Wonder if I could trade for him. I want to wait to see if that other trade gets accepted first. So the evening of the fourth. All right, five emails. Let's see. NHL scouting. Oh, I got more NHL players scouted. Let's filter by wingers. Rockstrand would be a good player. Atkinson would be a decent player, but he is 31. What's his contract situation? Oh, so it's 5.8, but it ends after this season. Interesting. Um, Anthony Duclair.
Yanni Gord might be somebody to go after. I just like don't have anything to give Tampa Bay because they don't want to mess with their they don't want to mess with their uh, their lineup at all. I was also thinking of Ryan Nugent Hopkins since his uh, contract is up after this season. Um, I don't really need to look at the scouting report though. I know he's good. <laughs> it's more about what the team is trying to do at this point. I like Jack Roslovich. Is he any good at faceoffs? Uh, let's go to profile. Oh, he is good at faceoffs. Interesting. He does play right wing as well, though. So that's what we need. Uh, what does the scout say? He would jump in and be a core player immediately, and possibly in develop into a key player. What does Gradine say? The same thing. Huh. That might be a guy to go after. He's a four-star player. What's his contract? Oh, he still has another year after this season. So that's a pretty good contract. If I could somehow get him out of there out of Columbus that would be an interesting one uh, next page all these players are basically untradeable <laughs> except for maybe Jack Studnicka Studnicka however you say it He's a, a natural right winger, but it, he's accomplished at center. His faceoffs aren't that good, though. So hmm. If we go. Oh, they accepted the vet, the trade. They took Bow Bowie for the second round pick. Nice, that's good. Uh, Riley Nash. Yeah. Uh, Bogosian's on waivers. Okay, so if we can, let's try to think here. We go for what's John? Who's John Leonard? I 
again, I don't know why I keep looking at players, because it's like teams, 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 teams. Uh, so we go to home, and then we go to trade center, team needs. Oh, you know what I wanted to look at? I wanted to look at possibly Connor Garland, I think is his name. Yeah, he's a five dot player, so they really don't want to get rid of him. Christian Fisher might be a decent pickup. For for cheap though. Defensive forward. Similar to Dustin Brown, which is a it's a type of forward you want. You don't want too many of those types of forwards, but if we have skilled forwards, we need complementary types of players too and he's only 23 no okay so so thomas green saying he's not, not even good enough for the lineup right now so scratch that um Connor Garland would be a great, amazing, but that's a that's a big no-no for them because they don't want to get rid of him at all. Christian Dvorak wants out. He's a center left winger though, and yeah, he doesn't play on the right side. Um, so let's go. Yeah, all these teams basically want to do the same thing. <laughs> it's either strengthening their current roster little by little or maintaining current roster while adding to it. <laughs> it's like you can't trade with any of these teams when this when they're all saying that.
Hmm. Like, I have to go to a team like maybe Chicago, a team that won't probably be making the playoffs. Sorry, I just got a text. Um, some yeah, a team that's probably not going to be in the playoffs, like LA. They they would take draft picks. What's a team that's that might have some players that would like maybe Calgary? What do they have? Four forwards. Dylan Dubé, skilled winger. Don't have they don't have a ton on them. He's from British Columbia. And it says he can play center. Yeah, he's accomplished at all positions. That might be an interesting trade to make. I don't think he'd be a top six. He'd probably be a third line scoring player. Manjapani is a little older and a little more developed. But I like Dylan Dubé a little more because, oh wait, Manjapani plays center too. But he's not good at faceoffs. Dylan Dubé is better at faceoffs. He's basically green. He's one one off of being green, and his mental is all the way except for aggression. Look at that! Like he's got lots of green. So if we go make a trade, uh, go to forwards. Dylan Dubé is all the way down here. Oh, he is a four-dot player. Shiza. Hmm. If I'm going to trade for a four-dotted player, I might as well go all out then. And Like, Dubé is a potential second-line player. I might as well just go with the guy that I really want, and that is... In Buffalo, we go. Sam Reinhardt, right there. He's also a four dotted player. And just go all the fuck out for him. Uh, so let's add that first. Let's add the second. Let's add the third. Let's add the other third. <clears throat> and then let's go. Mitch Elliott possibly and Jalen Chatfield. Not prepared, eh? Let's just make the offer and see what happens. I'm determined to get to get Sam Reinhardt now because I I don't want to downgrade who I'm gonna try and get and pay the same. Like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna overpay, I'll do it for Sam Reinhardt, somebody like that. And then if he's still available, I'm gonna get him. So that's what I'm doing. Let's 
the media asking me if the trade happened with Colorado just gotta confirm all right so we've got we're on the day game day with Calgary so let's go I keep getting texts what is happening that's okay Okay, so it's game day let's go to roster all players uh, let's ask the head coach this is how I get the head coach to automatically kind of set the roster roster to what he wants okay, Quinn Hughes is still hurt um, I think that's all good. Let's go to tactics and do ask coach again. See, I don't know why he has Hoglander on the bottom line. That doesn't make all the sense in the world. I prefer to do like Tyler Mott on the third line. Oops. Let's go Tyler Mott on the third line. You move Hoglander onto the second. Yeah, they they have Pedersen on the second line instead of instead of uh, Horvat. So you go Pedersen and then Hoglander on the wing with. Horvat and Peterson. And then Barbashev can play the wing with Sutter and Asari on the fourth line. Larson, Mott, McEwen on the third line. And I think that looks decent. And then when I get a. If I ever get a, another top line winger, we can, we can put Hoglander on the third line and have a have a more more spread out uh, scoring and then for defense we've got Rathbone, Hickey, Carlson, Gabriel Carlson, Hamannick, Edler, Montour, goalies we've got Demko and Georgiev so let's do that And then when Quinn Hughes comes back, our our D will look even better. So let's go home. Let's continue. And then there's our game there against Calgary. Uh, I don't know why it did that. Oh, wait a second. Uh... Oh, I have it set to watch the game. I see. We'll just watch it in super speed. <laughs> and two to one going into the second. <laughs> And it's tied. Uh, it's 3 2. We scored on the power play, I think. Look at the bottom. This is like, you can't read that. <laughs> oh, it's tied. Oh, no. Overtime. Oh, Calgary won. Wow. They came back and won. Yikes. That's bad. 0-2 to start the season. <clears throat> 
switch the music to something else. singing I just want the background sound um. There we go. Okay. Let's go. Scouch watch. Oh, yeah, our player Carlson. What do they have to say? So he's already a four star player, and he's going to continue to be a four star player. Defensive defenseman. Good for around 20 points. not a scoring defenseman obviously <laughs> does Gradine say oh is Thomas Gradine says he's not good enough uh, the other scouts are saying he's currently a core player so that's a huge discrepancy between what the head scout thinks and what the other two scouts think wow oh well I I mean, if the if the coach didn't like him, if the coach doesn't like him, he will tell me. Let's see what they have to say. It's unable. Oh, really? You've had him for a while now. All right. Whatever you say. Let's go home. Let's go. Let's see. Still waiting for that trade the reply on the trade we don't play again till the ninth so we have a few days to try and work out another trade before a game at least I think the I'm gonna end the stream as, as soon as I get that trade done because I've been on here for a while now we've only done two season games so far <laughs> okay 11 emails here we go. All right, they confirmed finally that trade. Fans are angry at me. I don't know how that isn't a decent return. Madison Bowie is worth, probably in real life, is not worth a second round pick. So, So, Jonathan Bates likes Mitchell Stevens, but he's only a center. He does not play the other positions. Um, I 
I mean, he's decent. He's a decent core kind of player. Uh, one of the scouts thinks he's currently a good enough to be a depth player. Gradine probably, yeah, not good enough for the line. I think we already knew that, but Harvey thinks he's a depth player too. So it, yeah. I need somebody who can jump into the lineup right now. Ben Thomas, defenseman. Huh. Nolan Hickey. Uh, oh, look at all that red. That's bad. That's bad. Uh, yikes. And he's 23, so like... How much better can he really get? Dakota Mermis, uh, Minnesota is on waivers, or is he on the block? It's on the block. Still haven't heard of that trade. Let's keep going, I guess. And they rejected it. Oh my goodness. Ugh. All right. So I've offered you a first round pick, a second round pick, a third round pick, two third round picks, it, a defenseman prospect, two defenseman prospects. What was the reason that they said no? Oh, he uses back to practice too, so that's good news. Um, they don't, they are hesitant to give up a key player. That's okay, because I'm going to overpay for him. Don't you worry. I'm going to get him, though. <clears throat> you can add the rights to somebody for him. Like, that guy, maybe. And... Piranha. <laughs> I keep adding these two guys, because I like everyone else, mostly. And other guys I don't like aren't really worth anything. So. <laughs> uh, they don't like Manukin. Not prepared to discuss that kind of offer. Um, okay, well, let's try and add a player with some value like a, a Jake Keeley perhaps ooh they say they're not prepared so just think about it okay <laughs> please I'm starting to get hungry. There we go. All right. And oh, it's the end of the of that night. All right, 30 emails. Okay, we got some scouting done probably too then. Landis Cog, player of the week. Defensive player? Defensive player is Freddie Anderson. Okay. Oh, 
Henrik Lundqvist, Lundqvist in the Hall of Fame. Wow. Fully deserved. Super underrated. Like, he, everyone thinks he's a great goalie, but I think he's super underrated because he was in... He was on the Rangers. And what, did he make it to the final one, once? And that's it? So yeah, uh, Henrik Lundqvist is underrated even though everyone thinks he's great because he's actually better than that. He should have a Stanley Cup. He just was given a team to back him up a little bit. Uh, Huso. What do they think? Let's see. Ooh. His glove isn't very good. What does Dredine think? A backup player. That usually just means AHL. Um, David Noel. Oh, but it's... Eh. It's a three-star player, and he doesn't say he's going to get any better, so I don't see the point. 17 year olds for the draft. Jared Tenorti on the block. Still not answering me, Buffalo. Give me, give me my player. Um, yeah. been recording for four hours I mean streaming for four hours Wow I have not streamed for this long in a long time this game keeps you busy you don't you don't get a lot done in a short amount of time you it's not like NHL 21 For some things, it feels like it takes longer than in real life, but I could be wrong. I don't. I don't know how real things in behind the scenes in an NHL really go. They could. They could go faster or, sh or slower. I don't know. It is the seventh, so yeah, still a couple days to go. <laughs> Sixteen emails. All right, there better be an accepted trade in here. I. Oh yeah, I got it. Rybakov, uh, try another tryout. I had him in a tryout before, but let's uh, scout him as well. Like he's he's only 22 and he was a free agent, so I just figured why not. It's obviously not super good, so we'll see. Um, okay. Sixty-nine, nice. <laughs> Twenty-eight year old. Wow. 
what are they saying about him? Offensive defenseman. Uh, so if, if if this other scout is saying he's probably a depth player currently, then I'm gonna guess that Thomas Gardine says he's worse. Yeah, he's a backup player. That's what he says. And he only gives him two stars, so. Flashy winger Frederick Storm. This guy's last name is Storm. That's so cool. And he's from Denmark. He has no green on offense though. So, but he's very close to green on a lot of things. But he is 31, so I don't think he's gonna be getting any better. Three stars. Um, report card's all right more of a role-playing forward, but Gradine doesn't think he's good enough anyway, so. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna keep looking at these guys. Some of these guys are former NHLers, like Justin Fontaine. They just didn't just keep up with the speed of the NHL. Uh, rejected again. How much more do I need to offer? What am I? What else am I gonna give you guys? Like, uh, um, do I want a center, a center prospect, a blue line prospect? Oh, I've got. What do I have on here? I've got a goalie prospect, a defense prospect two defense prospects and a winger prospect. So if I can find a center prospect and a, another defenseman prospect maybe. I don't know. Um, let's see. So they're interested in Yermo. I'm not super high on him myself. Like his, he's okay. I'm just like, we look at this. It doesn't impress me. This does, and this does. He's a mobile defenseman for being six foot four, which is good. I just don't know about anything else. So I might just add him to the trade. You can add like a we go here. Travis Boyd. He plays center. <laughs> Let's offer it and see what happens. <laughs> I'm getting desperate. I'm getting desperate and this is what happens. <laughs> it's not even like an overpayment other than maybe a couple of the draft picks. I'm just throwing as much garbage at them until they say yes basically <laughs> like I might just run out of pl roster players at this point <laughs> um yeah okay let's see what happens
Okay. This is game. Oh no, that's just the end of the games. Just simmed all the games. Let's get to the next day. Oh, is it saving? It automatically saved for me. How nice. Oh, yeah, I set it to save every week now because, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 12 emails. Rodin, oh, Rodin uh, rejected the contract offer. Okay, that's fine. Not gonna, doesn't really hurt my feelings. Uh, what? Jonathan Taves retired? He's a coach now? What? He's only 32? That's weird. He's in the Hall of Fame now. Holy moly. my scouts for a second and oh yeah okay he's still scouting the next opponent okay good 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 all right let's continue I really hope they accept this next one this next trade offer Rejected? Oh, come on. They don't want Travis Boyd. Oh, okay, that's understandable. I don't want him either. <laughs> what if I... If I add a different player then, what else, who else do I need to add? Let's go to goalies. I already have Jake Keeley in there. I don't really think you want anyone else. Uh, defenseman? I'm not gonna throw in Jet Wu. Uh, Forwards. Uh, Jimmy VC or Mark Michaelis? Let's see if they want Mark Michaelis. Or oh, you know what, Jonah Gajevich, because of because uh, of what the coaches were saying about him, that they don't want him. Let's offer that, see what happens. I don't know why they can't just reply immediately. I want to know your answer, please. <laughs> Give me Sam Reinhardt. Uh, 
Oh, proceed to the game. No, I did it again. I forgot to change the settings, and now I can't. Crap. All right, well, let's continue to the game, I guess. <laughs> Watch it go really fast. Oh, we're already down 2 nothing. That's cool. Oh, we scored one. Okay, continue game. I wonder if the reason we're getting scored on so much is our defense or our goaltending. Because, I mean, Demko's good. It could be the, the strategy, defensive strategy or something. I don't know. Oh, it's 4-2. Oh, uh yikes okay well hmm this is sad this is really sad that's okay sam reinhardt will help And then at the end of the month, I will get a, um, what do you call it, a report on the players and see if I need to make some changes. I don't know if they automatically do that in this game or if you have to do it yourself manually, but either way, I'm going to do it. Obviously, I don't have to get a report on like top-end players. I don't think. <laughs> All right. Oh, Besser reached a career milestone. 200th career game. Nice. Okay, so let's do that. Let's continue on to the next day. Hey, Mike Massacre. How's it going, buddy? It's been a while. How you doing? You still playing NHL? I heard you get too angry at it, like, like me, and just can't do it anymore. <laughs> now I'm playing this, uh, this game, which is a little more... It's, it's, uh... It's a lot, very slow paced. You're not actually playing hockey, but I figured it'd be a good way to test out my new headset, my new mic, my new camera, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, I will have a love-hate relationship as well. It's, yeah, I know where you're coming from with that. in the finish scouting I've been good I've been good I've just been been busy I got my got my PC up and going finally it took some time because I had to wait for wait for the GPU to come which took like three months and then um, we had the GPU and then we I had a f have a friend who was going to help me build it but because of COVID we couldn't do anything and then I end up, ended up having to go on a 10-day isolation because someone I know got COVID. And that was the same weekend that we were going to plan to build our <laughs> build the PC together. And then uh, after that, 
a few weeks later we finally got together to build it and so now it's built and then I've been spending the last probably two weeks uh, dealing with all the settings and trying to make it all nice I've, I've done a you've probably seen I've done a few a few streams with no camera and with like a really crappy mic setup but now it now it's all pretty much coming together um, I ended, uh, yeah so there's I don't know if you have a PC mic but it's like there's just so many little settings little little things you got to deal with it's so, it's so it's worth it in the end when you get it all to come together but it's just like I don't know how many how many YouTube videos I've watched about it, about all these different programs, and it's just it's a little overwhelming. And I'm glad I had a had my friend to help me because I would still be trying to figure it out at this point. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how I've been going. Just also just been busy with with the daughter. The weather's nice now, so we're trying to go outside a lot more and stuff, so, yeah. Things are good. Yeah, it's good to, good to hear from you. Sixty-nine. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Branson's on waivers. Good riddance to him, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's see the waiver wire. It's just him. Oh, okay. No, I don't want to claim him. No thanks. He sucks. Four million? Holy smokes. Okay, so we need to make this. Uh, we need to make this trade happen. Sam Reinhardt, man, it's gonna be it's difficult. quickly change that setting before it forces me to watch another one. <laughs> when do we play next on the 12th? And it's the 10th. Okay, perfect. That's the one thing about this is it takes a while to load up sometimes when there's a lot going on on one game or one day. It's going through different processes.
trying to simulate all the games. Hopefully it's working on making that trade happen that I keep trying to make happen. Putting Sam Reinhardt in a Canucks jersey. Yeah, I don't really care about all these games. <laughs> I just want Sam Reinhardt on the Canucks and then I'll be happy. That's basically my goal at the moment. All right, it's Sunday morning, finally. All right, 36 emails. Slater, oh yeah, Slater Cuckoo, I'm interested in that player actually. Uh, two-way defenseman. Oh, A minus on defense. What does Gradine say? Yeah, Gradine views him as a depth player too. What's the other guy say? Depth player. Depth player. Uh, overview. Dean's got him as uh, the same. They all like him that way. Okay. Good, 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 good. So I'm going to add him. Oh, no, he's already on the list. Okay, good. I don't know if I'll add him yet. Try to trade for him yet, but I will at some point. gonna be a three star green doesn't though that's my head scout still rejecting this trade what am I gonna have to do here what am I gonna have to do to trade for this guy do I okay you know what They don't like Jonah Gadjevich. That's fine. You don't need to take him. I'm going to take this one of these third rounders off. And I'm going to add my other first rounder. That is how much I want Sam Reinhardt on this freaking team. So let's do that. I'm not unloading a solid roster player, that's a lie. I'm unloading a lot of draft picks and some AHL players. Okay, let's see. Um, we're not playing, so it doesn't matter. When is when is Quinn Hughes gonna come back? He's still hurt. It said ten days. I feel like it's been ten days at this point. Okay, so if this if this trade proposal doesn't work, then I'm just going to have to end the stream because I am very hungry and I have stuff I have to do. <laughs> it's getting late for me.
not late at night, just late in the day where I have stuff I got to do. So, but I will, I will make that trade happen. It just might take a little longer. But if this time it doesn't work, then we're just going to have to end the stream. But that's okay. Uh, I feel like the test went well. Sound seems to be working. The camera clearly works. You can see my face. <laughs> um, all, all I need to do is add some add alerts and all that. Add a little bit more to the overlay. Stuff like that. But I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good. Okay, so I don't care about these games. Leave me alone. <laughs> Stretchy stretch. <laughs> okay, I've got one email first thing in the morning. I've got a game against Philadelphia on this day, too. Oh, the scouting of Philly is done. I see. Okay. Um, continue again into the later days of the game. Rejected, oh, come on. What do I need to do here? Oh, that's piss off. Okay, well, let's save the game. I'll uh, quickly set up the roster. Oh, Quinn Hughes is healthy now. Come on. Why aren't you putting Quinn Hughes in the lineup? Like, okay. Uh, defense. It's so much easier to look at when you do it that way. So, Carlson is considered a... Thomas Gardeen considers him to be... A depth, I believe. Not good enough for the current lineup. Okay. So he's the depth guy, basically. And how has he been doing? How's Thomas Hickey been doing? Minus three, one shot. Uh, let's see. Thomas Gardeen thinks he's a three star. And a depth guy, okay. That's fine. Um, Jack Rathbone. Doesn't know a ton. But, you know what, let's Let's ask the coaches. Showing all the qualities required of a possible rear player. Showing all the qualities required of a possible great player. Okay, and then scout player. Because I need to know if he should be playing right now. And let's see his points. He's got an assist in three games, a minus one, six shots. He's putting up two shots a game. So that's good. Um, seems like he's like mainstay. Um, we might end up having to... So we got Thomas Hickey for free. So we could just flip him in another deal to get a better, another defenseman that's like NHL quality. Um, we go to goalies. We got Demko and Georgiev. Georgiev hasn't played a game yet. Demko has, and he seems to be struggling. Or maybe it's just the defense because 
he should not be struggling. Um, forwards. Let's see what we got here. Brandon Sutter, what have you been up to? Absolutely nothing. So, Brandon Sutter, see ya. Justin Bailey, hello. Um, what has Johan Larson been up to? Not a ton. Okay, so his rating isn't super high. We got him off waivers anyways. So it's not a huge deal. Um, he is 28, so I mean... So we will have to... What we will do is... Where is he? Johan Larson. Put Louis Erickson in for him. And... Barbashev, what's he been up to? Minus three. Scouting reports, got him as a three-star player. Decent player. Um, just maybe put in too much of a role at the moment. Noel Asari, don't have a scouting report on him. I think I have him set to be scouted though. Let's just do it again, just to make sure. And I think that's it. So let's, yeah, so let's um, go to, roster management, reserve list maybe? No, let's go to, Roster management. And, oh, okay. All players. And then roster management. <clears throat> Who could I call up? You know what? I'm getting too hungry. <laughs> We're going to end the stream. I'll probably finish doing this. Uh, later but uh, let's save this just want to say thank you for everyone who came um, make sure you follow bling bubble make sure you follow Mike massacre they're all in the comments make sure you follow go blue devils and let's see I believe there's another oh yeah Alex the great make sure you follow Alex the great they're all they all most of them stream Oh yeah, the human Google. The human Google as well. The human Google streams as well. I just want to make sure I don't forget anybody. Yeah, that's all of them. Okay. Make sure you follow all those people I just mentioned. They're all great people. Most of them stream. I don't think Mike Massacre or Blue Devils does, but they're also great follows. And um, yeah, thank you for coming. Have a great day, and I'll see you on my next stream whenever that is.